Liberians, register to vote for the 2023 general and presidential elections. Registration starts December 15, 2022 and ends March 17, 2023. Your vote is your voice. Be heard. Vote as if your life depends on it because it does. You have the power. Use it. Register to vote. Play your part. A message from the class reloaded with sponsorship from Africa Media. In Liberia, November 1944, a public spirited person was born. Joseph Numa Wakai from Wasanga, Foya District, Lofa County. He is a role model. He's actually my inspiration. He's also a perfect example of humility. He's a very humble person. Through that baby, the heavy start giving all from this one here. I know that when he get there, he will help me. He will help the nation. In Liberia, November 1944, a public spirited person was born. Joseph Numa Wakai from Wasanga, Foya District, Lofa County. He is a role model. He's actually my inspiration. He's also a perfect example of humility. He's a very humble person. Through that baby, the heavy start giving all from this one here. I know that when he get there, he will help me. He will help the nation. In Liberia, November 1944, a public spirited person was born. Joseph Numa Wakai from Wasanga, Foya District, Lofa County. He is a role model. He's actually my inspiration. He's also a perfect example of humility. He's a very humble person. Through that baby, the heavy start giving all from this one here. I know that when he get there, he will help me. He will help the nation. In Liberia, November 1944, a public spirited person was born. Joseph Numa Wakai from Wasanga, Foya District, Lofa County. He is a role model. He's actually my inspiration. He's also a perfect example of humility. He's a very humble person. Through that baby, the heavy start giving all from this one here. I know that when he get there, he will help me. He will help the nation. In Liberia, November 1944, a public spirited person was born. Joseph Numa Wakai from Wasanga, Foya District, Lofa County. He is a role model. He's actually my inspiration. He's also a perfect example of humility. He's a very humble person. Through that baby, the heavy start giving all from this one here. I know that when he get there, he will help me.
uh, let me let me welcome everybody to um, to another edition of the class reloaded. Uh, we come on uh, seven uh, three days a week. I hope we could come up seven days a week. That will be one of the <laughs> uh, the best things to um, to happen. But we come on um, three days a week: Mondays, Wednesdays, and Friday. Um, and, and let me say welcome to all of our listeners across the globe, uh, those of you who are following us via um, social media and on the radio. We come to you live on Pushwa Radio FM 98.1, Shata FM 102.5, Radio Tupa 89.1, Voice of Lofa 99.3, all the way there in, in Vonjaman Lofa, um, Radio Tupa 89.1, there in Grand Basso County, Radio Joy Africa, FM 97.5, all the way there in Magibi County. Voice of Gompa, 106.5, all the way there in Gompa City, in Nima County. And Buto Radio, FM 102.3. On tonight's edition, we have with us um, two guests. Um, George Solo, who is the uh, former chairman of the... Uh, the Congress for Democratic Change. He is joined, he will be joined um, later on by um, Henry Costa. Costa is the chairman for the Council of Patriot and also the, um, and also the um, senatorial aspirant for Montserrado County in the uh, upcoming 2023 elections. We also have the Secretary General also with us from the Unity Party, uh, Mr. Amos, um, Tue also joining us from Monrovia. Uh, we have again with us our, our own um, Cornelia back again. Hopefully, we hope that this time around she can stick around and her internet um, it will be the best <laughs> this time. And we also have our own Antimiata um, joining us. And let's say um, on tonight's edition, the uh, we will be as usual beginning our conversation with what's trending, uh, each of our panelists including our guests, will go across the table and speak on trending national issues um, happening in uh, Liberia and across the globe. Um, and then we'll move the conversation to our first segment, which will focus primarily on five years of the CDC government. Is it a promise fulfilled or a promise betrayed? Uh, we'll take a deep dive into the promises made by the CDC government in 2018. We will look in deep and see whether Liberians can actually trust this administration five years on um they're looking for a second term we'll see whether liberians can actually trust this administration it's been five years we'll look at the successes failures and uh betrayed promises and then um we'll look at the national elections commission as time having once we and have the the, time uh, of the next edition, the we will we will go into the elections commissions um we'll look at the ppcc's rejection of the um debate they paid uh, from the Elections Commission to um, give the biometric contract to a company called Ekempt and Inet. Uh, these are two companies that have combined um, to um, to put a bait in. And, 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 and one is from China, one is a Chinese company, and the other one is a Nigerian company. And then, uh, if time permits, uh, we will look at the UN General Assembly. Um, they, we learned that the government of Liberia is at the General Assembly. We'll look at uh, what it means for our country a year to elections and uh, what can Liberians expect from the uh, from the General Assembly. Well, to discuss this, plus much more, we have um, George Solo, as I said. Uh, Henry Costa will join us shortly. Um, we also have our own Miata family. Um, we have George Lobo, as usual, uh, and our own firepower, um, uh, Geraldine McPia. We have Amos Toy. I hope Amos can get his internet sorted out. And then we have George Solo. Uh, uh, George, if you're there, you can come on live. Um, I see you have Solo. I mean, Solo, um, you, you still have your profile picture up there. So if you're hearing us, you um, you can come up. Yeah, I'm up. trying I'm trying to monitor the internet and make sure, Stephen, that my, my contribution is clearly made. And, okay. and that, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm not going video because it reduces my ability to keep up with the conversation and contribute. Okay, okay. Uh, all right, George. Um, Steven, so, do you have a picture of him? I don't, I don't, but I think if he can change his profile picture on his account, that would be the way 
Yeah, if you, know, you can change your profile picture to his picture, just his regular picture. On his awesome. account, I will not be able to do it from here. Yeah, if he does, you that, know, I will, I, will, I will try to do that, but I'm on the phone and my, my voice represents me. It's okay, yeah, 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 right. Yeah, so, um, 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 so let's let's begin the um, let's begin the the um, the conversation. As usual, we start with uh, with what's trending, and everybody will talk in uh, a minute or two. Uh, maximum three on uh, what's trending, um, and and I will begin the uh, since George is the guest solo. I mean, is the guest. I will begin the conversation with George. George, um, solo, what's trending on your end? <laughs> I think I think what is what is really trending is 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 how we handle our electoral process moving forward. Um, understanding that with with impeding sanctions. And we've seen this repeatedly in our political landscape where people who can no longer work in government will now try to pivot towards that electoral process as an exit. We saw that with the likes of Prince Johnson and Vanny Sherman and so and so. And we're seeing the kickback that is giving us in terms of the credibility of the legislative branch of government. So I think with the international sponsors, the US, the EU, all of those people that contribute to NEC, we, we do not want to replicate a, a, a situation of the Browning Samoka scenario where only after you are elected, we have to come back and initiate the whole process to make sure that you're done. So as we look at this Maniski sanction, I think we should be looking at it from an organizational perspective and institutional perspective as, as well. You know, is the net going to be an institution that will be supported by the U.S. and EU and all of the funding, but yet not abide by the regulation on who you do business with? So for me, that's a critical point. I know we've had a lot of failures in our legislature um, with the passing of the recent incentives for themselves. But, you know, tonight will be that that will be a, a strong area of focus for me. I think that's what's trending. Thank you. Thank you, George. Um, uh, Ante Miata? You, you let me unmute you. Um. And is the principal? Because I want to Go ahead, address you. Huh? Come again. I said the class reloaded. If Senator Dillon is the principal, are you the vice principal? I'm the registrar. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I would like to make an observation. I'm hearing myself in my ear. This is so frustrating. Okay. I want to think that the class reloaded has some of the most intelligent Liberians tuning in and listening in. Therefore, your production of this podcast is a little sloppy. We cannot take 13 minutes, 45 seconds to just run things over and over and over again. I mean, don't let us underestimate What's yeah, um, I think Miata, the reason we did that and not an excuse was because uh, beyond the scene, we were having internet issues. We we're trying to solve that, so we didn't want to go live, and then uh, we, we, we we go off. So I was trying to resolve that. So we, are, we would like to apologize to our viewer for, for the Yes. Um, yeah. Yes, it, it, it was too much. If we, go, if we have to run commercials or promos, then we can split it up, Stephen. Yeah, sure. We'll do that. We, just we can have split it up. Yeah. Back end. That's why we delayed. Okay, now, why has my screen gone off? You on? We can see you. But I can't see myself. Uh, uh, some of the challenges we're having, but we can see you and we can hear you clearly. Okay, all right. What are some of my uh, uh, issues? So that is not included in my issue. Just a point. <laughs> <laughs> yes, darling. Um. <laughs> I don't know if anybody 
uh, try to move around Monrovia today, 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 I understand it was just hell, absolutely hell. Traffic, and then they are digging up Warren and Broad Street for drains. Also, um, UN Drive, you know that particular place right opposite Public Works? Yeah. It's a health hazard again. I don't know what it is about that particular place because between me and you, they've repaired it every single year since 205 and we just can't get it right. But as a result, the city traffic was diverted. You go this way, you go that way. Nobody could find their way in, nobody. And it was just a mess, I'm, un I'm told, Benson Street and Gurley Street is a cesspool. The, 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 the um, drains are open, feces spilling over into the street, etc. Just today, I spoke to Monrovia. This is our city. And don't even go and mention the Roberts Field Highway. That is something else. Okay, um, also what got me, I wrote it down somewhere now, I'm looking for it, I can't exactly, I'm, I'm coming, be right with you in a minute. Yes, um, I hope Cornelia does stay on because some of the questions I have in, uh, uh, is about the Elections Commission, and she is Unity Party's uh, Vice Chair. Liaison. Okay. Yes, liaison for the Elections Commission. So I would really like to hear from her and see if she can answer some of the questions. And last but not least, I spent my whole day binging on the royal funeral. I know, I know, I know. Call, Colon what is it? Colonialization, blah, 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 and all of those things. <laughs> I, I know Stevie will laugh. And like, I, and like I told you all, I can appreciate it because I'm a Pan-Africanist. I know what went on, etc. cetera. Um, but I looked at it from the point of history. I looked at it from the point of tradition. I looked at it from the point of discipline. I looked at it from the point of executing an event that was absolutely flawless, absolutely flawless. And as I watched it and the longer I watched it, as an African and many of my friends in our chat room, my Nigerian, Ghanaian friends, all of us were asking, how come we cannot do that? How come we never seem to execute things, events, with the kind of dignity, the kind of reverence? Why? Young people, and there were mostly young people involved in the actual ceremony, the, the, the carrying of the carriage, and, and young, young sailors and, and, and soldiers. And you didn't hear anybody, oh, my man, hold it, oh, my man, hold it, oh, oh do, uh, hold it up. You never, you never. <laughs> oh, I can see the people got weak, and we need to learn something from them. That, no, seriously, I mean, um, you know, yes, it was flawless, it was well done, and um, I think more people my generation, um, the Queen has been there for all our lives, for all of our lives, she has been the one constant, uh, presidents have come and they've gone, um, you know, and she's always been there. We we loved her sometimes and we hated her some other times, 
with the Diana incident and all of this business, but she was constant and she became our grandmother. For me, she became a mother because her son Charles and I, the king now, King Charles and I are same year children. Thank you. So you know, please forgive us. Thank you. Thank you, Adamiana. Let, let's go quickly to George Lobo and then uh, Pia, then we'll go to Amos. What's, what's trending? Quickly. I'll say real quick, what's trending is the, the current incompetent, unprofessional, unethical government dispatch a bunch of is to flood the airways, continue to dispense myself. lies. For I can't see myself. I the screen chair. Uh, I, I listened to the current district number eight lawmaker struggling today on OKFM, trying to make sense of the economy. And I think our journalists, I want to bring this to your attention. I think folks in the media length too should begin to do a better job. If you have no understanding of the subject matter, get someone to help you. Uh, if you have no understanding on the economy, you just can't sit there and have these type of conversation. The very first thing, the honorable lawmaker had no understanding of what causes inflation. You can't talk about inflation if you don't know what is the cause of inflation. So again, why he was struggling there. But the reality remains, Stephen, one of the fundamental problems that continue to hamper Liberians and their ability to survive every day is the problem of the economy. And this is the serious trending issue. When you cut wages, it influences the economy. If you do not attract foreign direct investment, it has a direct impact on the, on the economy. If inflation is high, it has an impact on the economy. So the suffering of our people continue to remain the most trending issue under the government that promised change. And those are the things that I, that really bother me a lot. And then to have government uh, operatives on different platforms trying to spread falsehood and lies, and they can't tell us what has been done to improve the economy and change the life of our people. For me, I find that very disturbing. And I hope our journalists can begin to do a better job on holding folks accountable when they show up in these studios with the facts, not just place where people come to just talk and spew our lies. We need to elevate this conversation. And so I am I'm holding the fourth estate accountable to these things. If you guys can't do it, leave it. So I think that's a serious problem, Steve, because if we will have people who are going to a critical election year and continue to allow these folks to come to their, to their various studios and they are different using their different platforms to spew our lies, deception, and falsehood, they will misinform and mislead the people. And then we end up with these type of scenarios and then we sit back and start asking, how did we get here? So I Thank think you. it's a serious thing that must be addressed, Steve. Thank you. Uh, Pia. Yeah, thank you. Um, hey, Georgie, how you doing? Mr. SG, thank you, my man. I, I heard you dealing with uh, uh, expired Samuel Jackson. The left is about time. There's a time for everything. When your time is finished or something, just move on. And as long as uh, people like Jackson, a part of every arrangement have to support our country, think they can still be major players on the political pedestal, we use young people like you to put some sense in their head. So thank you. You are a strong secretary general. Uh, Stephen, two things quickly. I, for me, was trending two things quickly. I saw a, a note from Lima Bowie uh, that he captioned a plea from a citizen. Uh, in our writer, Lima said, many of the actors who are interested in being president of Liberia, they've reached out to her asking her to be the aeronimate. Uh, she didn't call names in that article, so I don't know whether your man JMB asked her to, to be running mate. Uh, comments of who I don't know, but she said nearly all of the people who are in the opposition running asked her to be running mate. She said no. And then she gave a reason why she said no. She said she believed the country needs a united opposition. In her opinion, if we do not have a united opposition and there's Waka on the other side, and there's Tiawan on the other side, and there's Communist on the other side, uh, she said we are will win massively. And I think that's the only thing I disagree with in her right out. Yes, I, I, like her, I think there could be some need for opposition unity, but to say that 
with all that unity that you look forward to, Mr. We are with all of the current conditions we have in the country will win an election massively. I disagree, but I think her plea is 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 is, is, is noted. Uh, we could not have been at this place if people had just put their egos aside, submit their, their ambition to one another, work for the unity of the country. Would have been far ahead of that. So it's unfortunate that we still have to be talking about that. And then the second one, quickly before I move on, uh, and it's good. Solo is here. Solo is a is a is a former chairman of the of the of the CDC. Uh, the likes of Joy Howard Taylor enjoying the the fruit of their labor. Uh, I don't know whether he believes she deserves it, but I've been watching her of late, uh, Stevie, in what I consider as a a, a political vuzela, a useless political vuzela, they call it. This woman, immediately upon the CDC coming to power, was in Bonk County and telling people there that it was their time to eat. But prior to that, this woman said she was not coming to be vice president to be packed in the garage. She would not be a race car parked in the garage. Meaning she was already looking over her own shoulders and the shoulders of the president. And considering some of the guys the president got around, they understood her message in the context it was meant to be. She thought that she would rival the authority of the president. She thought that she would be in competition with the president because in her mind, that's what a vice president should be. And immediately when the guys realized that they placed her in a cubicle where she actually supposed to be, then she started playing victim and started creating a situation where Liberian could feel sorry for her that she was being mistreated at 12 or did not respect her, her office could not get gas, her office could not get money, her office could not get car. And she started playing, playing, playing victim, basically. And the worst of all that she did, irrespective of the agreement that people may have, this madame is vice president. She's the second in charge of the coalition in 2020. When the coalition needed everybody on board to fight back the onslaught that were coming from the opposition community, this lady, because her particular interests were not protected in the election during process, she folded her hands and watched the CDC being led to the slaughterhouse and slaughter, including in her own Bond County. All of a sudden, few months to election, she's running all over the place, all over the place. She was in Bump County over the weekend for something they call retreat. And I heard her shouting over her head that they need all their people who went who went away, telling Molo, we want them back, just bring them back. When did you realize that you needed people back? When you thought it was your time? When they gave you a chance, Joel, and I'm speaking to Joel as one training issue. When they gave you a chance to have the the, the MPP portion of the coalition occupy a few slots, what did you do? You did not take it back to the party to find party stores, competent party stores, and allow the party to fill those gaps. You formed people for your tendency, which led to the major fight between you and, 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 and Bunny and others. All of a sudden, you are about coming back to an election, you play nice. You ask, you ask him that the next bride, and that George we are supposed to be in love now with this bride. And you're passing around, you're stressing the need for bringing people back, and because you think you'd need another six years. If George, we are in order to see through you, Joel, the way I see through you, if they know that some of the things you did, enjoy all of the fruits and benefits of the Taylor regime, and immediately you are kicked out of office, you begin your ex-husband. You are not divorced. You get up with the same thing that we are in order. So stop passing around. Stop passing around. You're not, you're not of any relevance and importance to, 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 to to, to, to our country. You just seek your self glorification. It's not all about yourself. Thank you. So Thank I, you. I, 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 I have been observing her, and I think that's what's trending for me. She just, she just a Thank kind you. of, I don't know how to describe her. Thank you. Elvis, uh, uh, um, quickly, uh, what's trending from your end in two minutes? Elvis, can you hear us? Hello? Yeah, what's trending? What's your trending issue? Can you hear us? Uh, well, yeah, sure. So, uh, in two minutes, the, uh, two minutes, the discussions is kind of... Oh, okay. Well, so, but basically, my attention is just called to um, a decision passed by the National Legislature 
uh, I think that there's a there's a law that they have they pass, uh, and that law basically says that uh, you know the I don't know whether that was discussed because I have not been on the platform for quite a long time, uh, but I think it was last week, uh, and the law basically says that uh, when uh, there is dispute arising from an election, the one that is declared the winner can take office, can be seated. And the, uh, while the court, the process is ongoing in the court, you know, these, if you have a very stable country where governance is respected, there's good governance, the rule of law uh, is upheld, is respected by public sector institutions, mm-hmm. by the government, then you can say, well, such a law uh, is in favor of every side. Of course, in Ghana, we experience similar situation. And in other African countries, there are similar laws around there. But with with the the Republic of Liberia, the kind of government that we are dealing with and the president that we have, who is a huge disrespecter of the rule of law, who doesn't believe in processes and system, I believe that the law recently passed by the legislature is not a good law for our governance, for our electoral process, and it could be a recipe for disaster. It could be a recipe for chaos and for electoral, further electoral violence. Uh, that means when, for example, if tomorrow, in 2023, there is uh, a dispute arising from the election and maybe National Elections Commission declare, uh, God forbid, the, the president winner of the election and the opposition decides to take it to the Supreme Court, the person can be seated in the presidency uh, while the, the court proceeding is ongoing. The president is going to use his power. He's going to use everything available to him to overturn the decision, whatever decision that might come from the court in his favor. So I believe Liberia, honored President George Weah, is not rare for such a law. And it's important for us to take keen note of that and I'm very, I'm very glad that members of the Unity Party Legislative Caucus uh, have taken a decision to be able to ensure that, uh, you know, the, um, that that decision is rescinded so that uh, we can go back to, to, to normalcy. Uh, we can you. go back to normalcy. I thought it's important for me to highlight that, you know. Thank you. Um, yeah. Thank you, Emos. Uh, I'll continue quickly let's, so that we can begin the conversation. What's trending? Um, for me, you know... Uh, either yesterday or sometime last week, a few weeks ago, we discussed the great UMU donation where the president said all their registration should be returned. Mm-hmm. And then we, we've, we've started to get information that students are in fact protesting because they've not been able to receive that money. So that's something that is of interest to me. I officially today launched an investigation because I'm interested in knowing why um, whether it's similar to the famous UL tuition fee, uh, free situation Policy. where mm-hmm. the, the proclamation is made but it's not actualized or operationalized. Um, so we're, we're hoping that the UMU students, although we felt a few weeks ago that that donation was not the best use of that amount in improving um, access to education and everything else, but it was made. And we're hoping that the president and the government can live up to that commitment that it made to students. Thank you. Thank you, Cornelia. So now, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we now move, uh, Solo, um, if you're there, we now move to the, to, the, to the meat of the conversation. And I think um, it's important for us to, to explain to our people um, what is it we really want to do here. Now, um, the CDC government has been in power for, uh, for, for almost five years. Um, next year will be the the six years, um, and, and 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 we're going to elections. And so there has been a number of promises made by the CDC government over the last five years, beginning with its 2018 promises. So the CDC made a number of promises that we think is important for us to to see whether those promises were fulfilled, and all of the failed promises that the CDC <laughs> listed. So. Let me let me begin the conversation first by by sharing with you all uh, some of some of the things that happened that the CDC promised and failed to to realize and fill the librarian people over the last five years. So, if you see on your screen here, you see that um, there are a number of things. Uh, first, the CDC promised one million jobs. That is a they failed. 
uh, the coastal highway is a flop. The Bali Island, the mineral resource swap, the hair fabric that uh, Clyde we have uh, uh, talked about failed. Uh, 6,000 Nigerian teachers failed. Um, the Igbo Mamb and Eton Loan, uh, nearly close to a billion dollar failed. Uh, 100 housing units in Nima County failed. Uh, Lone Star Air uh, failed. Uh, 100 housing units in Bar County uh, failed. Uh, the 25 million COVID distribution failed. Uh, 22 investors from UAE failed. Uh, Israeli company failed. Soccer Stadium failed. Housing unit in West Point failed. Um, taking 250,000 youth out of out of uh, empowering them failed. Free loan to market. It was squandered. Failed. Uh, 50 million medical facility failed. Uh, free medical care for citizens above 70 failed. Uh, increased salary of civil servant failed. Free. That just so. There's a long list of failure. If you do the gray sheet for the CDC in the last five years, uh, she was called an F, F minus. So, Josh Solo, you being the former chairman of the CDC and you being one of those who I believe uh, um, long before 2017 had had the vision of the CDC in terms of its drive to move Liberians from poverty and the purple agenda. I will assume that that agenda didn't just start in 2017. It was a rollout of your plans uh, beginning 2005 to 20. 11 then it morphed into 2017 so what we'll do is we'll, we'll hear from george then um solo which is then all of us will either ask him question or make a comment and then we can pick the conversation so george solo um uh, what is when you look at all of those premises and, and the fact that the government has failed to even deliver one of any of those premises what do you see well i think you highlighted it the, the issue is that on which government or why, but it's, it's why we are not attaining the level of success that we expect to have by now. Um, with the skill set that we have acquired, with where our democracy have reached, um, we should be having bigger and better conversation. It is just sad that we see a pattern of regression and that you know governance does not seem to be leaning towards the interests of the people. And I think that's a hard place to be um, when you, you know, you derive an agenda like a pro-poor agenda and the poor gets poorer. When you have a systematic approach to looting the nation, when you have an incompetent group deciding the future of the nation, I, I think that's where we end up. The question is not where are we? The question is, you know, how are we going to get out of there? What do we need to get out of there? What kind of tribe? What kind of energy? What kind of direction? What kind of sense of change? What do we want to see this nation as? And, and, and how do we see ourselves outside of the equation, separate of personal benefits, and how Liberia progresses as a nation? I think that's the bigger thought. And, and, and that's the bigger psychology that I would like to concentrate on in this instance. All of our institutions are failing us from the judiciary to the legislative to the executive. The, the people at the bottom of this conversation who have been treated wrongly is the Liberian people. Now the question remains, what do we want to do? How do we stand up for our nation? How do we build a level of patriotism? I hear people talk about elections on one hand and talk about the election commission on the other hand. I said, this is a untrustworthy organization. We do not trust them. We do not believe in any process to pull forward. But let's go to it and complain later. And that never works, never has, and it never will. The issues facing Liberia must be addressed now. Liberians must stand up. We have people coming from over the ocean to impose sanctions, to get to the bottom of where our wealth is going. So I think when we Liberians talk about it, it's more about how do we fix Liberia pre-2023? Now, how do we come back from a crisis and say, let's prepare for a crisis? Because I think it's obvious that we all know it's going to be a crisis if we continue to allow things to trend the way they are. Thank you, John. So let me let me welcome Henry. Um, Henry is joining us. I see he's driving. Uh, Henry, uh, welcome. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you so much. And I'm sorry I'm late. And I'm yeah. glad to be here. Uh, what's up, Josh? So we were, we're talking about the, 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 the list. We listed a number of things that the CDC had promised in 2018, and it's been almost five years. 
that the government has failed to deliver any one of those promises, whether it was the, the coastal highway, the 6,000 Nigerian teachers, the uh, 1 million jobs, uh, the, uh, the rice, the uh, food distribution during COVID, the hair, the, 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 the hair factory by Claire Weir, um, the, um, and just everything, the e-governance and everything. So, Costa, still before you ask, before you ask Costa that question, you see, uh, uh, when you, when you want to discuss these kinds of issues, you and I know the detail of it, but we do the public justice when they, when they have a clear picture of what you're talking about, then they will appreciate exactly what you're talking about. What I know is that you have a clear online of all of these failures because you, I saw it in the bar before we come on air. It doesn't do any harm if in a few minutes you allow the public to see, because it is their own word. So let me put it say, up here. Let the, let, the, let the public see it in total. Then they will appreciate what we're talking about. Because so you just can't do it. Costa, so looking at that, uh, what's your take? Hmm. Well, I think when you have a group of people who have no understanding of governance, no governance experience, no understanding of just how, um, what it means to commit on these things, and and much more on uh, much more delivering on them, they will make all kinds of ridiculous promises. Uh, you know, you are right. All of these uh, are the most famous of the promises they made. Perhaps there are other ones that may not even be on this list. And we're in the fifth year. We're about to enter the sixth year, and they're not going to commit. They um, they are not going to deliver on these things. So it just goes to show uh, and, and to make the case that the CDC government needs to be put out. And I, I believe we have a golden opportunity here in 2023. And I believe that we are going to be able to do that. They have won the elections for us. It's the CDC government, this opposition has not had to do much work. The, the CDC folks have done a great job for us. Uh, I like to say this all the time, and some people don't like to hear it. This opposition is very benign, for lack of a better word. We're very benign, we're very docile, but the CDC is very aggressively working for, for us. And so we will, we will beat them because the Liberian people know what they've done, and what they've done is massively fail. Thank you. Thank you, Costa. So each of us can, 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 can make a comment, or, or, or if you have a question, I see Senator Delon is here also. So let me begin with uh, with uh, Lobo. Lobo, then Ente Miata, um, Pia, then uh, Cornelia. So since we have Costa and uh, George Solo, our guest, will we either make a comment, uh, ask a question, or make a comment and ask a question together? So, so George, so, Lobo. So Steve, real quick for me, I want to make a comment and then I'll ask uh, George Solo. A yeah, quickly, in, 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 in one and a half minutes. Yeah, real quick. Uh, George Solo, you continue to hear Liberians are struggling. You yourself have interacted with listening to you outline the poor performance of the cdc uh i know many of you believe in president we are in george we are dead uh what exactly did you people see from an organization perspective that you people believe that this individual could lead an organization before a country what were those signs what were some of those indicators what were his experiences that convinced you guys that the life of 4.5 million people can be raised into the hands of George Ria, with a former truck driver like Samuel Twede, a car grader who was selling cornbread, and these type of folks, may your coaching who never worked before. What was it that you guys saw? Mm, thank you for your question. I think I think the fundamental issue in a political process is to change the status quo. And in changing the status quo, yeah, you will have truck drivers. Yeah, you have Senator Dillon as the senator of Monterey County. Yeah, you have people from different aspects of the political spectrum expand to be able to contribute to their country. Um, every political organization operates on a vessel. Who is the most popular person there? Not that they're perfect, but that they're able to get you across that bridge. George Weah had the popularity. Now, George Weah, like every president, like every senator and every public official, if you are surrounded by the right person, you have the right mentality and the right approach and you address the right issues. If you are not, 
is the opposite of that. Yeah, so if you want to go back to Tolbert, Todman, Ellen, what did people see when others were against? It was the possibility. It was that this person can get us across the bridge. Is that this person will be a humble leader and listen. Is that all Liberians will be able to contribute to their country. Is what we see. Now, has it always turned out in that way after the person becomes president? Absolutely not. But in terms of the vision, the direction, the thought, the participation, the communication, it was, it was all aligned. Steve, who was next? You said into Miata, right? Will I hear anything from you? You're muted. You are muted, into Miata. You could not. You could. You could. You could. Okay. Um. <laughs> I, I really don't want to direct anything at Mr. Sulu. Um, I've heard about this gentleman and it is now interesting for me and him to be on, on the same panel. Uh, Stephen, you you made a list, you showed a list. Yeah, let me put it back up. No, don't put it back up. Don't put it back up. In 2017, when George Weir was running for president, and at the time, George Sulu and others were there to support him. He never came to us and told us he would do anything. There was no manifesto. There was no interview. There was no debate. In fact, when some of us asked, we got insulted if the book we eat just to absorb him of that. The list that you have now was when we are, was inaugurated, sitting down with his enthusiastic pro ideologies and put that together because they felt they had to show us something. I don't know why they, uh, uh, 500 million from the Ebon project is there. I, they were never going to happen. We knew about that in 2018. So for me, George, we are promised me nothing. I have very good ears. He did not promise me anything. So I'm not disappointed. I am not betrayed. I did not expect anything, even with the best of advisors. So that's my issue there on the promise, betray, etc., etc. Thank you. Steven, Steven, if I may respond to it very quickly. So, George, you hold on. You, 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 you respond to both. I don't want you, because you and Costa are our guests here today. So, we we'll, we'll direct the question to, to, to either of you. So, I want Senator, D I want PR, Senator Dillon, then uh, Cornelia. So, PR, if you have any question for either Costa or George, they can go both. George can. George, yeah, hold on. Look, let me say uh, uh, solo, then you can respond to both. Well, look, uh, in, in, in 2011, I, I, I heard Anthony Miata talking about 2017 and Solo. I'm not sure Solo was, was involved with the, with the CDC bid in 2017, but I know in 20, 2011, he was the chairman 
Mm-hmm. And, and what I, and what I want to ask Solo is in twenty in twenty eleven when when you guys put We Are Paul, even though he was a second to Winston Tottenham who headed the ticket, many of the things we see now, like Bali Island, all these imaginary projects, as big as they may have been, Coastal Highway. Uh, because I don't remember seeing your manifesto or your platform. Were these targeted programs that you you had drafted for implementation for the Liberian people if you have been elected in 2011? Or were you some need your reaction to the euphoria of just becoming a president? You jump on the side, you go to LU, you say free school fee. Yeah, you see that go low in the swamp. You say we can change your play to Bali Island, and you jump. What, what, what really is it, George? Because you are there, man. Let's hear from you. Uh, uh, first time you can go after George when George is gone. When you talk about that, and uh, 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 Pedro, I, 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 let me let me throw my question to Pedro too. So, so Pedro, when he got you guys know, came, I know you didn't support him in 2017. Uh, we we all fear we were on the other side. But I realized when it came to power, you said you were giving them space. And so you didn't want to bother them, you will support them for a while. And, and, and truthfully, you tried to support them. Why you formed that decision? You you rather talk something Google come from out of, out of Nazareth? Or what was happening? Out of Chernobyl? Oh no, all of poisoning, all of poisoning. All of poisoning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yes. Let me respond to this. So just respond then after you cost out. Okay. Yeah, and I'm, I'm still trying to connect Madam Fambulous. You know, respond. Call me enter me after, darling. Right. You I can bore you. And different opinions, so it's not it's not surprising <laughs> to me. But I'll get I'll get down into the issue. You know, uh, 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 Mr. Pierre, it's easy to make fun of the process that made Georgia president today. But but as you look at that process, whether it was controllable or it was just knee jerk or it was whatever, there was a fund that made him successful. He won an election, he is the president of Liberia. Something made people put his name on paper and put it in a ballot. Whether it's common social appeal or is the commitment for an agenda that will empower the masses or whatever it was, there was something fundamental that attracted people. So let's be realistic about that, because if we don't learn from our history, these things will continue to happen. And and what is today's seriousness is yesterday's joke. You know, but back to the point on expectation. We are all on different spectrums. And different I tend to be on my aspect sacrifices I made the conversations I had the contribution I made towards this presidency she did not so yes maybe she was a non-believer in the beginning and she remained a non-believer what's her expectation is going to be low yeah people for this political space no expectation. George, you're going in and out. So you want to elevate your voice. Yeah, say as we talk about this political space, no expectation is irrelevant. Even the ones that don't expect nothing or the ones that have the most expectation. It's a combination of where we want Liberia to be. And so I don't know if this conversation is more about what we expected or what we want out of governance. And that's for me, that's more where my conversation is. What I want out of to them, your trust or distrust for them, but the fact that you have a clear set of expectations for the people who govern you. That's my that's my perspective. Costa, you go then then uh, uh Senator Good. and then Kodria. Thank you very much, uh Pia. And uh, uh good uh, uh the reason I made that consideration was very simple. When they declared Mr. We are president or president elect, I remember I, I, I recall very vividly, I say only yesterday, where I was and how I felt when We are was declared winner. There was 
it was as if for me personally, my life was at risk. That is how I felt. I was at home. And the reason I left the streets much early that day, I believe it was the 28th or the 29th of December. December. It was, I knew what the election results would be. Everybody knew it was not rocket science. And I felt that I was not going to be safe being out there on the streets when the election results were announced. Considering how much hard I hit Mr. Weir during this, the, the runoff campaign. And when they declared we are president elect, and the people went in a state of uproar, jubilating, I was frightened. I could not wait to leave the country, to return to the United States, to go to school, or to resume my studies. For two reasons. I did not feel safe at home, and I just felt that the country was about to face a very difficult period. Like Ente Miata said, I had no expectations of George Weah. I am not disappointed in George Weah because I did not expect George Weah to deliver. I am one of the people on the platform who know we are a little bit, and Mr. Solo knows that. Weah does not have the intellect of a, of, of a seventh grade American child or a sophisticated Liberian 12th grader. He does not have it. One day, Mr. Weah told me, Da Costa, he used to call me like that. We need to ask the government to get our own oil black. I said, well, Mr. President, they don't, I mean, Mr. Ambassador, we are, they don't give oil blacks. This is before he became president. I said, they don't give oil blacks to political parties. This, you know what prompted this conversation? This is in 2013. The Exxon Mobil had just signed a, a, a deal with the government for Block 13. And everybody was talking about oil black, oil black, oil black. So John, we are there. if they can give an oil black to a company, CDC being the largest opposition party, they should give us an oil black. And I told Mr. We I said, this is not how they do it. They don't give oil blacks to political parties. He said, oh man, we are bigger than that company. They don't give one. I said, even if they give you an oil black, what would you do? Do you know what it takes to do offshore drilling? It's hundreds of millions of dollars. And he was convinced that his idea made sense. I could go on listing things that just show just how unintelligible and inherently bent on all kinds of outlandish and ridiculous things this guy this guy believes. For example, this guy believes that COVID, the COVID-19 virus, I mean the vaccine, when you take it, it turns you into a green monster. He refused to take the vaccine until he was going to Paris, France for that big event before they made him take it because there was a prerequisite. So I say this to to say I didn't expect much of we are. But my decision to support the, re the regime when it came to power was not based on what I thought we are would deliver. I knew he would fail. I was giving what is called the benefit of the doubt. I have pushed the needle too hard. Everybody felt I hated we are the people on the other side. So I believed I needed to vindicate myself of, of that. I needed to convince them that I didn't hate the man. So what did I do? I said, well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get Mr. We are one year. And you all know I didn't even go a year. I went 10 months. And before I left, I sent Mr. We a message. A very long message on November 24th, 2018. And I told Mr. We are that I was leaving. I was tired. If he does not listen, I was being embarrassed. People were barely watching my show. My, my ratings had dropped. On set, we are was a failure. And so I left, but I felt vindicated. The reason people accepted me back when I came back was because I left early on. I was not there to be defending all these blunders that they were making. It was embarrassing. And so I have very little expectations of we are. I had no appointment of him, therefore, he did not disappoint me. That is my point. Yes. Thank you. Continue. Continue. It's continue. Continue. Go ahead. Ask your yes, question. I'm on. Um, so the CDC has been a contradiction from the very beginning. So reading a whole list of failures for me, that's not anything surprising. Like most of you here on the panel, I obviously didn't believe in the CDC, um, and therefore campaigned against them. And we saw from the very beginning, the CDC, even their, their, um, their motto or whatever they believe in change for hope. There were questions around what that means. 
whether we're changing now from a place where at least Liberia was at 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 a growth rate. So where now all we ha we have is just the hope that something good can come out of Liberia. All of these different projects that have failed were all things that when they were pronounced, Liberians had hope and those hopes were dashed. Then we came with the pro pro agenda. If you even listen to the name pro pro, at, at the first thought you'll be like, but this is like is for pro, so it's is is to promote the increment of being the, the increment of poverty in Liberia. But they, they justified that it was for the poor people. It, it's still the justification still doesn't make sense to me. And I think that that agenda actually plays out to mean that is to make the Liberians poorer than they were when the CDC took over. So it is pro poor, it is a pro poor agenda. Um, but for me, on the overall, I think that issues in Liberia, particularly in the failures of the CDC government, I like most of the time to also blame the legislature because that is the branch of government that is responsible to chastise, whether it's the executive or whoever. We have uh, the legislature has oversight responsibility. And until Liberia has a very strong and forceful legislature, you will always have presidents that will be there. Even when they have good intent at the beginning and they drop the ball, they won't have anybody to keep their feet to the fire. I listened to Mr. Solo when he gave his presentation. And I just think, I, 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 I started to think when he said that there was more, more statement he made that sometimes leaders have good intent, but they're surrounded by the wrong people. For me, I feel that is an excuse for lack of leadership. Any leader that or anyone that gives that as a justification for poor, for, for underperformance of a leader, I think that just is a justification for lack of leadership. So my question is, at what point, Mr. Solo, and everyone can try to show that and show in what, it, what the thoughts are, at what point should a leader or does a leader start to take responsibility for their actions or inaction that results into these failures that we have we have listed. Do we continue to say, oh, the leader is good, but the people around the person is the person that, that the people are causing the leader to not perform? Or as a leader, are you supposed to be the one providing direction for the people that are around you, even if you rely on the expertise? Good, good question. So, Solo, you can go. So it's like blaming the spider web and not the spider. If you were to visit any leadership course or to study any leadership psychology, you will understand very clearly that there are certain tenets of leadership that propels you to success. One of them is surrounding yourself with the right people. It doesn't have to be equated only to the Liberian situation. A leader's first responsibility is surrounding yourself with competence, with integrity, with commitment. So it's not an excuse. It's one of the major criteria to leadership success. Then let's go to the next level. How do you expect a leader themselves to behave? As an example for where the people following you will understand your commitment. That's the second step. So Cornelia, if we have to break those down into simple steps, it will be as an individual contributor, how does the leader operate? That's 50% of what leadership is. The other 50% is emotionally, psychologically, what kind of skill set they have around them that enables them to be successful. The president cannot be the, the, the expert in everything. He cannot be the one pushing everything. That's why we have a whole executive branch. That's why we have the judiciary. In case the executive goes out of line, where is the judicial branch to hold them accountable, accountable with credibility? In case they don't, where is the legislative? So when you say excuses, these are the basis for which we look at things and we allow our democracy to crumble. Don't look at this stuff from CDC perspective. Don't look at it from George Weir's perspective. Look at it from an organizational perspective. Look at it from a national perspective. There are people participating in the government that were not seditions. There are people in critical roles that were not seditions. So how do you say this platform that was created 
or this format that was created is not being implemented based on the actors, when even the actors are not part of the creation of the implementation you're talking about. So there are a lot of complications to this scenario that I don't just wish you to snowball it into one simple scenario of white and black, because that's not the case. The people around the president, the people in critical cabinet role, the people in critical legislative roles, the people in critical judicial roles are all responsible for where our nation goes. And, and I, I'm, I'm talking constitutionally. Steven, can I follow up, Steven? You, you muted. Go ahead. All right, so yes, yeah, Josh, so the, 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 the reason why we have a constitution that spells all certain power and authority uh, is, is, is with an intent. So it wasn't a mistake when our constitution put aside cabinet position and other key position to be the prerogative of the president to decide who he brings around him, you know, with the with the concurrence of the of the Senate. That's why Colonial uh, Colonial put it very squarely. You will blame President Weir. I mean, if, if you want to blame the people around President Weir, who brought the people around him? Is it not the president who chose who he should who should be his a government official? We have come, I'm coming, I'm coming. We have very competent Liberians, but it's the president, like his own party chairman said, like the mobile model said, who will be interested in quote unquote, according to him, people he slept with, people he did this way, rather than looking for competent Liberians. And then, unfortunately, like he said, we have a Senate that does not work the sort. In a list that the president, I mean, of later, I see them getting some money from the airports, money from Maritime, all that kind of thing. But basically, they just have to say, yes, sir, the president, we are. So if if if, if is failing, who do you blame? Doesn't it bother? That's where that's where that's where Pierre, I'm being precise and you are contradicting yourself. How yeah, the president have the right to appoint. The Senate confirms. So if the president appointed a fool, it's the responsibility of the Senate to say, maybe due to your personal agenda, due to your private agenda. Yeah, but, but George also. No, 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 wait, wait, let me finish. Let me, wait, let me finish. But, 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 but let me finish. George, George, you're not getting finish. the point. You're not getting the finish. point. I am so, getting the point. Pia, me and you saying the same thing. I'm one step ahead of you. What I'm saying is, let's imagine, and that's why I took you back to the Constitution. Let's imagine, which we have seen, and we can attest to based on what you just said, that the president is presenting the wrong candidates. That's why we have check and balances in our policies and our laws. Just like the Senate did with the RIA, the same as a president, we don't know what you were thinking, but the person is not passing here. These are checks and balances that we cannot ignore. However, what you are lamenting in terms of the irresponsible nature of the executive, I am not supporting that. That is not an excuse. I'm with you on that. I'm okay. saying why our constitution put these check and balances it's because as a people, at some point, we will vote and we'll select people who will not portray the instincts of leadership as leaders. That's why we have these check and balances in our laws. So, Pia, I'm not supporting any wrong. I'm not saying this behavior is right or the incapacity or the ineptitude being exhibited in government is correct. What I'm saying to you is there are other bodies within our constitutional parameters that should be able to hold even the worst president accountable, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, it, it, it makes a lot of sense, and I'm with you. My only disagreement was, I, I don't think the people around the president are the ones to blame. It is both the president and the legislature who combined to bring all this incompetence to government. They are responsible because all the people who are blaming the people around the president, who brought them around the president? Ag the agreed, president agreed, the yeah, yeah. agreed, but like I said, I'll take it one step further. Even the people around the president who drive for him, the people working at the central bank, the people working at the final ministry, they are all citizens of the Republic of Liberia. They have the right to stand up for what is right. So you cannot exclude them on the basis of, oh, because you are not high enough or you are not close enough. No, from the closest aid to the president, all the way to the one who opened the president door, this government is not performing. You are accountable, Pia. You are accountable. I fully Thank agree. So, yeah, and, 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 one minute, six, three, one minute. Let me just say the last thing, then you can move on. Why appointment will have to meet the concurrence of the Senate? This minister doesn't have approval from anybody, only the president. So if you appoint these people, the Senate agree, and you know they're not performing, your government is crumbling, and you have the authority to dismiss them without anybody agreeing, and you don't do it, 
that it comes right back to your lab that you are now fully responsible for your own failure because you see people failing you and you refuse to take an action. Yeah, there's a place where the box stops. I'm with you. The box stops with the president based on government performance and implementation. However, I'm adding another layer and I'm saying let's also be cautious of the different institutions that if we're empowered properly and had integrity could afford us coming into these situations. Thank you. Thank you. So, George, before you go, let me hear from Senator Taylor. His internet going in and out. Let's get him quickly before we lose him again. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, I just want to say good evening to everybody. Good day wherever you are. Just sort of welcome, my brother. Uh, Henry Costa, welcome. Uh, you know, for 2023, you got my unflinching on diluted support, Henry. Uh, let's do it together. I just wanted to advise us as panelists. Uh, Josh of uh, Lobo, welcome again, my brother, and always good to see you here. Uh, we have two main guests tonight. Josh uh, Solo, uh, Josh of uh, Lobo is becoming um, a very frequent but well, respectable guest. I think we should have our guest, our main guest for tonight speak more on the issues and to the issues. Let's give them more time to expound on the issues. And then when they leave, then we can give our closing analysis on the issues, but let the questions be directed at them and let them be more the ones to speak than those of us who are the regular panelists. Sure. That was my suggestion I wanted to make. Good evening, and I'm happy to be here. I'll be here and I'll do, but I'm here. So, Josh, your question. Uh, uh, yeah, I got questions. So, um, if you will allow me, okay. can I ask our guest a question? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Josh, Josh, John Lobo, go ahead. I just want us to give a more yeah. time to our guest, uh, Josh, so I'm, and I'm Henry Costa, in, to do more talking, and then we can do the analysis in the end. So, so Chairman Solo. Right. Chairman Solo, um, here's my next question. You spoke in terms of leadership. You spoke in terms of the ideology, the platform. And some point I got confused. You stated that uh, he was the man who could get us there. Uh, I was wondering when you say who could get us there based on his popularity. Did you at some point in time think that he can get us there, but can he get the job done when we get there? Because a lot of times in life, you will not be remembered by how you get there. You'll be remembered by what you do when you get there. What convinced you people? Why is it true you guys needed to get there? That indeed, when you guys get there, this man will have the ability to do the job. And I want for you to please add this there. Can you clarify for the librarian people since you travel with then George, we are now president, we are, and you happen to serve as chairman. Did at any point in time, you ever saw any documentation of George, we are owning any mineral water company anywhere in the world if it ever existed because Google wants to find me. My other question follow up. This man holds a master's degree in business administration. So that means his ability to lead or manage an administration should not be a problem. Does this mean that he's incompetent or do we question his credential based on his educational background? Heron Costa, you were a talk show host. Here's my question for you, sir. You live in Liberia during the Unity Party government time. 12 years, you saw what Liberians' lives were like. You saw government officials. Liberians were getting paid during the time. What can you say to Liberians? On inauguration day, President We are said Liberians will not be spectators in their economy. Based on your own understanding of where the economy is today, can you say, Mr. Henry P. Costa, that Liberians are participants in their economy and they are benefiting the changes from the CDC? Those are my questions to you guys. Good question. Good question, George. So, uh, Solo and then Costa will hit. George, Solo, you are muted. Go ahead. Yeah, but I think the, the <laughs> a very passionate question, but we, we must address these questions both in the sense of retrospect and where we are now. Um, just because things have failed doesn't necessarily mean that the original thought was negative. And then and, and the second aspect of getting over the line um, uh, Costa is going to an elections. Senator Dillon has been in elections. I went to elections, and we are all aware that it, it takes a certain individual and a certain character to lead the entire psychology to get past the line. 
and, and that's what it was. And and in all political instances in the UP, everywhere now that 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 direction is still being made in in, in the event of Mr. Boca. Somebody has to take you across the line because the messages are combined, because the ideology touches different points of our society. So yes, now when the children of Israel were trying to get out of Egypt, what was their priority? Getting out of Egypt or being worried about what will happen when they get out of Egypt? They were trying to get out of Egypt and that's where Moses come in. So when you look at the entire history of the CDC from a revolutionary perspective, it was a joint sense of accountability. You talk about the collaboration with Winston Tudman, you talk about Aaron Costa being a part of that process and contributed. It, it, that's where all the pieces were coming together on the basis of different thoughts and different skill set. Now, that is not the scenario now. But I think if you want to go back to the planning stages and look at what the original plan was, you will see that it was very inclusive. People from all walks of life, including PL who is on this line, were inclusive in what a CDC looks like today. Because part of the agenda was to tap into the skill set being built within the LA administration to be able to propel young developed minds to take Liberia to the next level. It was not win or take all. And so, yes, in, in, in the relationship to your question, it was about something else. It has turned into something else, but we must be realistic when we start to engage the original thinkers. It's like our forefathers are playing the constitution. Did they expect us to be the way we are? Is that why they build the constitution? No, they build the constitution on the basis of eventuality. People will change, scenario will change, situations will become dynamic, but we want to have a set of principles that we all live by. And I think it's the same thing when you engage politically. 10 years from now, we might be talking about the Liberty Party of Senator Dillon. 20 years from now, we might be talking about the Unity Party of Mr. Boyka. We still have to look at it in the concept of what system and what structures do we have to enable us to sustain our collective growth democratically. And I think when you ask questions like that, then it becomes more of a personal, why did you? How did you? How did you guys? No, the strategy was successful. He is president. Is he impacting? No. Do we want to hold accountable, challenging those places like we did everyone? Absolutely. But in terms of attacking the original ideology, I think it's a lost cause. It's like, you know, beating a dead horse. Thank you. Costa. On the issue of Mr. Weir's rise and ultimate success, uh, cataclysmic success by becoming president, which to me is the greatest accomplishment anyone can attain in their life to lead their country. Exactly. Mr. Mr. Weir is a remarkably blessed man. Very few human beings have been as blessed as has Mr. Weir. For someone to accomplish such monumental feats in one lifetime is remarkable. He reached the pinnacle of football, the most beautiful sport in the world. Then he reached the pinnacle of politics before he became 50. It's remarkable. But here is what I think about Mr. Weir. He is an extraordinarily blessed man who is who does not appreciate his blessings and i blame the political elites of liberia for mr Weir's success in politics and i hold this view and there's nothing that would change my mind otherwise if they had done so well if they had done right by the liberian people an impoverished despondent cynical people they would not consider or look to leadership from a man like George Weir, a man who promised nothing, a man who knew nothing, they would not have looked to him. It is the collective fault of the ruling political class of Liberia that shifted a large segment of the population to India to George Weir. They are responsible. A George Weir would not become president in the Ivory Coast. Oh, a sir, George Weir would not become president, most certainly, in Ghana, but a George Weah could become president in Liberia because the Liberian political class feels so desperately that the people shifted to a footballer to become their leader. Now, to answer the question that was asked by Brother Lobo, 
There is, I'm, you know, and it is, I'm particularly, particularly, uh, it's a particularly complex thing for me or interesting thing for me. So I'm not, I'm no fan of Ellie, and you all know that. Because Ellie is one of the reasons why we are his president, period. Exactly. For one of the most sophisticated Liberians to have performed so dismally. And at the end of the day, handpick a complete dope over an experienced man with proven integrity to, to replace her. To me, it says everything about who Ellie is. This is a woman who has benefited from Liberia more than most of us will ever benefit in our lifetime. She helped bring the war. She became president. She won the Nobel Peace Prize. She won every important award there is out there, sitting on our shoulders. Yet she continues to hold this country in contempt, as though this country killed her entire generation, when it is the opposite. She robbed us of our childhood, robbed us of the opportunities which we could have attained to benefit, our, to, to become better versions of ourselves. She left with a George Weir. She made a very, par a very parochial and narcissistic decision by selecting we are over Joe Buakai. Thank you. But however, however, as bad as she was, her government was far better. And for me to be saying that today, <laughs> she was far better than Open We Are. The people, somebody said, when the people used to call you from Liberia, they would say, Mama, pay my school fee or pay my horse rent or my child sick. So then when they call you, they say, Mama, just buy me one cup of rent. Hmm. My major pay my way, let me go somewhere. That is how much Georgia has debased the Liberian people. Ellen Gomez, we used to have a They were here, we not see here before. The level of recklessness, the level of, 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 of bravery these boys have exhibited that led to sanctions. We see one person on Ellen getting sanctioned. Were they not corrupt? They were corrupt, but they were not as reckless. No way. So there is no comparison. But yet, Mr. Weir wants to tell us that he got me better than Ellen time. Me, Ellen's big critic tell you is a lie. Ellen was way better than you. You're not even compared to Ellen Smart all. Ellen better roll from, uh, uh, oh, we borrow money, from, from red light to Ganta, $300 million. Have you built any such role? Have you? Broad Street was pothole raiding. Is that how you inherit it? The wage bill. I mean, the, the national budget was 80 million, 75, 80, 80 million. She left it at 500 plus million. You say you've, you, you've taken it to 700 and something million dollars. Do you even raise all our money? You, you don't. You, you, you brag of surpluses, yet you are unable to pay salary on time. There is just no comparison between Ellen and George Weah. And Ellen knew it. And that's exactly why Ellen supported him to be president. So that people would miss her. So that a guy like Henry Costa, an art critic of hers, would be saying, yeah, that she, that she better than him. That was it, therefore. <laughs> that my, that my own, I got to say that. <laughs> Steven. As he, as he, as he entered me, I laughing. <laughs> Let go to let go to enemy after then we'll come to you, Pia. Mr. Solo, you are very good. You're very, very good. You've mastered the English language and you can play all the games with us. I listened to your first statement where you said the aim and drive of the CDC was to change the status quo. You wanted to change the status quo. I want to ask you, the status quo are not Liberians. The status quo are not Liberians? Yes, they are. They are Liberians. And, and, so and so there, you come with nothing. You, your party comes with nothing. Mm -hmm. You empty 
all of the institutions with the people that have been given skills and education in the 12 years, master's graduates, bachelors you are, you are from accurate. America, China. You are accurate. They were working within the institutions. How? How do you come? How do you come and Madam, empty them out? And, 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 and Madam Fabula, if I may respond. You change the status quo with illiterates, with individuals who know nothing about work? No, 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 no. You can, you can say it every way. My country is destroyed today. What do you mean by status quo? Are those people in the status quo not Liberians? They are the brightest, the brightest and the best they, because of pettiness, because of jealousy. No, you all have destroyed the republic, the republic that I know. You want to change the status quo. What qualifications do you have? I believe we have what qualifications? What values? What sense of history? Yes, and, and, and this is where this is where when you break down what is called the status quo, what the revolution was fighting about. Oh please forget it. We talked about revolution and we didn't go anywhere. You're the one who talk about revolution. We we are the revolutionaries. And the job let him answer the question. He's our guest. Let him answer the question. Your presumed revolution was a failure. No kidding, but you were running behind democracy today. You wanted to vote. Who brought it in? Who brought it in? We did. Ungrateful little people, ungrateful illiterates. You know about democracy? You don't know about democracy? Give me a break. Okay, but these are the classification that led to elitism in Liberia. Go ahead, go ahead. When, when people have been looked at as illiterate, when people have been looked at as not having history, when people have been looked at, even though they are Liberians, this is what Costa was just saying led to George Weir ascendancy. Mm -hmm. When you start to use these adjectives on people and you start to draw the line, we can, all be Liberians. But, oh, like we can all be Liberians, but we are Liberians that disagree with elitism. Just because you are educated doesn't mean you should talk down to me. Just because you are from a certain tribe doesn't mean you should have more than someone from a certain tribe. Just because you live in this part of town doesn't mean you should have better access to education. <laughs> That's the elitism I'm talking about. Yeah, That's you are good with the words. I'm an elite. No, no, I make no apologies. No, no, no. again, it is not. I'm an elite. We I make no apologies. And the psychology that brought George we are to power. And it is not tribal, it is elitist. And when you start to address people, when you call them non-essential to their nation, when you say because you, you are uneducated, oh, you're from West Point, who are you? You're from Oro, who are you? Those things lead into a situation where people want things to change. And that's the status quo that people want to change. Better access to education, better access to health care. It doesn't matter what your name has to be. You have a possibility in Liberia. You don't have to be a fumbler to be successful in Liberia. You could have the worst name and still be successful in Liberia. That's the elitism that we try to fight. And so when we talk about this revolution, and Costa is highlighting the level of influence that George Weir had, is because there's a strong base of the population that we're tired with seeing this level of elit elitism that you are exhibiting here today. I think Eddie Miata gave me some of her time, Steve. Well, let me ask. Yeah, so let, 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 let go to George. <laughs> I come from Maryland County, George. So, so I'm very happy to be an elite. That is in a job. That is in a job we are doing now. You can be from Maryland County and you can still be elitist in your mindset. But I see it now. Yeah, so what are you talking? What are you talking? You are good with words, my brother. I give you 100%. 
You speak English well. I have an appreciation of the English language. You know? Yes. I'm feeling my head in the other time. See? Did they read the comment? Let me, let me ask yeah, you. go ahead. Okay, let, 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 let Piago, then you go, John. Okay, Piago. Oh, you go. I'm finished with Mr. Solo. <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Judge, um, you know, when, when, when President Selig came to power in 2005, there was something that happened. That set the basis of a long-running conflict between the party as an institution and Madam Selling as the president vis-a-vis -vis the government. And that thing was the party did not play a role in the constitution of the government. The difference I see between that and the Weir era was that Madam Selling did that because she wanted a certain quality of people. And we saw them, the Antonis Sire, the Chris II, irrespective of how some of it ended, she was targeting people with the requisite qualification, the requisite competence, because she was inheriting a broken country. That was an affront to the unity party because it is the party that struggles to bring a government to power. I saw the reincarnation of that when the CDC came to power. I am told, maybe you can confirm or deny, that most of what we saw happening as the constitution of a new government was just done by a few persons, a handful of persons, spearheaded by Nathaniel McGee. If you were chairman of the CDC at the time the CDC won the election, we have been different. We have stood up to we are if the party was being left out of the formation of the government. That's your question. And for Costa, Pedro, you were in on when, when the show started. And on my training issue, I made reference to a piece written by Lima Bowie. I don't know whether you've seen it. And Lima said nearly all of the presidential contenders, especially from the opposition camp, have approached her to be running it. And she said she declined. She told them all big no. And her reason is, it takes only a united opposition to win Mr. Weir. And without a united opposition, in her words, which I disagree with, we are will win massively. <laughs> you, are a major, you are a major actor in the opposition community. What views do you hold about those comments from, from Lima Bowie? So, George, you can start first, and then, and then Costa can answer my question. Well, firstly, uh, and Pia, in response to, 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 to your question, I, I think I've, I've been saying that on the show. Um, I have a very high expectation for how our democracy functions. And I think you alluded to it the other day where I sat with you, you know, the likes of Amara Corner and the likes of um, 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 the former Maritime Commissioner, Mr. Kesseli. And, and we kept a circle. And, and if we have to be honest, you guys even kept that circle of young intellectual Liberians who were working with Madame Sally. You kept relationships with George Weah. And, and, and part of the whole plan was not to change this social dynamics from the point where we go from zero to 1,000. It was to be inclusive. It was to give opportunity to the majority. But at the same time, to be very careful about skill set and which Liberian can contribute to how the nation move forward. Um, if you listen at the time we were in advocacy, we talked many times about this concept of one person wins all. And that's how our country has often failed. I was part of the discussion and collaboration with the MPP. I've held personal discussions as CDC chairman with Mr. Boca and everybody in the political space. Why? Because at the end of the day, it's only in unison that Liberia can move forward. If Liberia can profit from Mr. Pia's capability and he's not a part of the Congress for Democratic Change, what comes first, CDC or Liberia? And we fostered this conversation to the point where Mr. Pia, you were in meetings, you were aware, where Madame Salif even opened spaces to the Congress for Democratic Change to participate in government. That's how much progress we made, if you want to be honest. Inclusion, young people, changing the course and the direction of the nation 
and making sure that Liberia moves forward. That was the plan. Now, let's fast forward to CDC's victory. CDC won overwhelmingly. Mr. Weir represented the Liberian people internationally and locally. He was with the authority, clothed with the capability to move Liberia forward. It is actions that are taken after you are elected that nobody can, can, can predict. Okay, the, pro the electoral process is, here's Stephen, here's Costa. Costa <coughs> running to go and be senator of Montserrat County. How do I support him ideologically? Do I guarantee that Costa is going to be perfect? If Costa makes mistakes tomorrow as senator of Montserrat County, do I come back and regret my action for supporting him to propel him to that place? No. I fought on the basis of an ideology. If he propels that ideology, I continue to remain aligned to it. If he doesn't, I critique him and put him in a right state of mind to realign with that ideology. You cannot predict what people will do. Humans are unpredictable, but what you predict is based on this person's pattern, based on their advocacy, based on their ability to rationalize this situation with me in their presence, there is definitely a way in which we can work this thing out. So no presidential candidate have already been perfect. Not one in our history or in the world. And that's why you have elections where people win majority. There's a minority, whether it's 40 or 45 percent, that never trusted you, that will never trust you, that don't want to trust you. Costa. Okay. Uh, no, boss. One minute. Uh, uh, George, George just said a lot of good things, but he didn't give the, he didn't answer the question. The question was the, the reference I made to the formation of the government. That's why been answering all the questions. And what I see happening now, it would have been different if he was still the chairman. That was my yeah. And my answer was yes, because when you work with me, when I engage you, when I engage B and Kessel, Amara Kona, and other young people in the government, when I even engage the president in your presence, when the president allows CDC to send recommendation for inclusion. That was all on the basis of inclusion. So yes, had I been present, it would have been different. Okay. Ideologically, personally, it would have been different, Pierre, because I will not be looking at you as a stranger. And this is sometimes what happened in our culture we downplay it. The interactions that you and I have had, even when you were in government and I was in opposition, it created a level of respect. Where if I was there today and it's Pierre on the line, I want to hear what you have to say because that mutual respect have already been created. So the change in environment is not, is not that huge. That's what I'm trying to say. Thank you. Thank you. Costa. Pierre, to answer your question, as a matter of fact, I met my dear fellow sister, Lima Bowie, uh, this uh, past weekend in Charlotte, North Carolina, where she was a keynote speaker at a fundraising gala. Uh, I think... Uh, my sister's political calculations are erroneous, and that is to put it uh, to put it mildly. Uh, there is no way Mr. Weir will win. When people say Mr. Weir is going to win, if the opposition does not hold together, Mr. Weir will win. They make it seem like Mr. Weir is popular. They, they, what they do is that they send me a message. They tell me that they have very little appreciation of the of of the gravity of Mr. Weir's political woes. Mr. Weir has been defeated twice, 2019 and 2020, in Montserrat, where he got 35% of his votes from. Mr. Weir, Mr. Weir's con uh, uh, problems continue to increase. Sanctions have happened. More sanctions will happen. There is no way Mr. Weir can win. So Lima Bowie is not a politician. She does not understand politics. To say that if we don't come together, Mr. Weir will win, she does not understand the game because here's what's going to happen. Mr. Weir received or obtained 38% of the votes in the first round. Mm -hmm. And Canada's true, true strength is manifested, original strength is manifested in the first round. Mm -hmm. That's Mr. Weir's true strength. That is consistent with Mr. Weir's performances in the last two elections. When I was there with Winston Tubman, we picked up 32%. Yes. It moved up from 28%, which Mr. Weir picked up in 2005. By 2017, the combination of Joe Howard Taylor with some immense resources coming from Ellie and other people, Mr. Weir moved up from 32% to 38%.
Now, pray you tell me, for we had to win the second round. A lot went into that. And a lot of people made compromises. A lot of people were completely indignant of a United Party third term, essentially. They didn't want that. However, let's go back to this. Do you think, Mr. Weir, with this kind of dismal and terrible performance, is going to move past the percent This is my projection. Mr. Weir will obtain no more, no more than 35% of the votes. Could be lower, but no more than 35%. Now, there's a, there's, there, there's a reason why I say that. Two reasons. One, do you know of anyone who was not a sedition before we are became president that is today a sedition? No. Nobody on this platform with a straight face can no, tell no, me no, no. that I you think, know new converts no, of I CDC. I, think I, I agree with you 90%. You are being factual if you look at that from an analytical standpoint. Yeah, but I'm coming No, no, but I'm 100% with you on, but let's take caution on Lehman's content. And we've all okay. made those kind of statements. It's a statement of precaution. It's no, a statement of raising awareness. From. It's a statement of raising urgency. Solo, 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 let him lay on that. Uh, I appreciate that, Solo. I appreciate where she's coming from. But you can still urge us to work together without sounding this alarm that Mr. Weir will win us massively. Massively where? Why didn't he win us massively in 2019 when we flocked him in Montserrado in a very humiliating fashion? And we repeated that humiliation in 2020 by a, an astronomical 85,000 vote margin. Where was Mr. Weir? The Weir of yesteryears who used to raise the hands of people like Akaros Gray and Hannah Brandt and those people who would win is not the Mr. Weir of today. So Lima Bowie is right to say we should work together, but we should be ideological partners. I yeah. cannot work with you when I do not trust you. When I do not trust you, I cannot work with you. We don't trust certain elements in the opposition. We must not work with them. For me, my politics is about ideology, it's about conviction. I support Joseph Yuma Baka in this election because I believe in him. I do not believe in Cummings. I do not believe in the other people. I believe in Joe Bokai. And I, I believe in Joe Bokai because of Joe Bokai's proven track record of integrity, Joseph Bokai's humility, Joseph Bokai's uh, almost lack of greed. This man is selfless and is almost without greed. That is why I support Joe Bokai. Do I believe those others uh, have the same quality, quality, qualities? No. That is why some of us went, even after Joe Baga went into virtual retirement, we brought him back out of retirement. Joseph Baga is not in this race for himself. He is in this race because we brought him out of retirement. We said, look, we can find somebody to beat this we are man, or we can find somebody that possesses the qualities that you have and that has the, the potential to win, and so we're bringing you back. And so my sister Lima is right to say, oh, let's work together. This is our first time saying it. The, the other day she wrote a Facebook post and she blamed me for being one of the people responsible for the collapse of the CPP. Again, I told Lima on my show, she's wrong. I did not cause the CPP to fail. The CPP failed because the guy who came fifth place decided to be the head of a political organization with the guy who came second place. When you have unrealistic avarice or un unrealistic aspirations and you want everybody else to subjugate their aspirations because of you, it becomes it becomes a problem. So that is what I have to say to what Lima said, uh, brother Pia. Yeah. So before before I let you go, Stephen, before I let him go on that, I know you are a very deep and serious insider of the Waka camp. Lima also made an allegation that almost all the contenders in the opposition have reached out to her. Uh, is, 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 is my old man Waka one of those who reached out to Lima to be not? I mean, his running mate. An emphatic no. An emphatic no. Joe Baca has not reached out to anybody to become his running mate. He has not reached out to Yumbly. He has not reached out to Yure. He has not reached out to Gonglo. He has certainly not reached out to Lima, who has not affiliated with us in any way. Uh, An emphatic no. Is, yeah, this is what I was going to add after Costa. 
you know, yes. and that's why when I spoke earlier. Yeah, Josh, quickly. Then we go to Lobo and then uh, I said I said everyone is on different spectrum of the disappointment and commitment pool. And and then for me, I have been clear about yes, when someone is sounding an alarm in our general interest. I agree with Costa on level of commitment, but when someone is sounding an alarm, whether they say snake, snake, or fire, fire, I don't think they really mean that there is fire or is already burning. They say, let's get together and sort this thing out, otherwise it could be worse. And then and, and, and that's the difference between an alarm and a realistic attack where you say these are numbers we are looking at. And I think I think Lima was trying to raise an alarm. Now, on, on, on the second issue that Costa highlighted, we must also be open to people that are not at that high level of the poor with us. We must bring along people who have little doubt. We must bring along people who have no doubt. We get our commitment from different places. But if you are to build a strong process for Joseph Boca, if you are to have him represent the Liberian people, we have to start thinking in that mindset where even those that are with you 40, 50, 60 percent and upwards also have a space to voice their concern, that they are respected and that they have been told that, yeah, we hear you, but it's not a priority. So I think that that's part of the maturity that we would like to see in the opposition. And again, 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 of course, that people will go to the poll for their candidates. But even if we get to a second round scenario, we expect the opposition to be aligned enough philosophically, even if the gap is there, but to be able to say, let's do this together. And I, and I think that's the concept and spirit with which I, I would like to look at the caveat thrown by Lehman Bowie, you know, in, in the sense of let's wake up, let's address these issues. Let's I agree. Unify. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah I, so I, 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 I agree. So um, let's hear from George Lobo. He's been, he's been quiet for some time. George. Uh, Stevie, I'm looking forward to the day I will be a guest, not a panelist, because I think I'll have enough time as well. But let me let me get I won't speak on some of these issues or say Costa said the same thing. Uh, I think you people saw me shaking my head, but JMB reaching out to Lima Bowie. Look, even Prince Johnson lied yesterday that JMB reached out to him, which was a blatant lie. Uh, I can't go back and forth on some of these things. We'll leave it where it, where it is. But let's come to my question. Oh, Chairman Solo, I, I, I'm glad to have you. Uh, since you pivoted there and went to the Bible, talk about the the children, the Israelites were concerned about getting out of Egypt. So let's start from that note. It's good. But I hope you understand that indeed when they got out of Egypt, when they crossed the Red Sea and they began to struggle, they told Moses that their life were better in Egypt than where he took them. So we might not just quote the Bible and leave certain context out. So the Liberian people have been making it very clear that they were far better under the unity party government than they are today. You say you want us to focus on what we can do in the future, which I, I, I'm looking forward to with, with, with 12 months to go. Uh, you were chairman of the CDC. Would you be able to look at Liberians now, given everything that has transpired, given the government that you people brought to power and the amount of suffering? You but mind been... you now, I, I think Soro, Soro left. Listen, Stevie. Yeah, no, 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 I'm, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. There he is. He left the case in before 2017, Soto, but you, you, yeah, Stephen. Solo left 20, Solo left before Solo, uh, Stephen, Stephen. It does not suffice. Solo, Solo is capable of addressing Yeah, I know, oh, yeah, yeah. Stephen. Yeah. the conversation. George Ria was a working process. From the moment this project began in 2005, those who carry on to the finish line will all bear responsibility for whatever transpired. George Solo will not be left up. He's not innocent. He was True. chairman. But I mean, he you enjoys, know, just, he enjoys audience, the fact that we say once a chairman is always a chairman. And the reason he carries that title is because he was chairman for the CDC. He spoke about engaging the UP government. That was the time. So what I'm saying today, as the former chairman of the CDC, this is a party. He talked about the ideology, the revolution, and everything they came to accomplish. So, Stephen, if... Mr. Solo will speak to the Liberian people today. Mr. Solo, will you tell Liberian people that the revolution that you people fought for, can you highlight some of the transformation that have been made? And if not, will you use this opportunity to appeal to Liberians and how do you intend for to repel your CDC? 
And my brother Costa, here's my question for you. Uh, you spoke on the issue that the you you agree that the issue of the elite, quote unquote, uh, may have contributed to George Weah's success. Granted. So I want to bring this narrative because you went to the hospital and a doctor gave wrong prescription to your child there. If something happens to your next child, do you take them to the car wash? Is that what you people are telling the librarians today? And on the basis of that, that's my follow-up, Costa. You will be running as senator. Uh, come 2023, you declare your intention. I want to say congratulations on your bid. We've heard that the librarian legislature is notoriously corrupt. Bunch of incompetent people there. Senators can't even read. Can you take at least a minute or two to highlight what would be your two key priorities if you should make it to the Liberian Senate. Thank you. So, uh, 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 Solo, you go first, and then uh, and then Costa will go. Yeah, you know, firstly, I like I like the way. Solo, you please elevate it. your voice a little bit. You're coming a little. Firstly, bit. firstly, I like the way you I like the way you put it and try to to put me in a state of repentance for for pushing an agenda that that manifested today um and very sadly you 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 yeah very sadly you you will not get that out of me the basis the basis of the conversation is beyond that agenda is 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 is, is what materialized and what did not and what fundamental pieces were left out and and again i talk about when things were being carved out versus when things are being implemented now we're talking about structure, we're talking about institutions, we're talking about looking at a nation. All those things are separate when you want to put the individual one and hammer on people. What changes is in the Liberian society today? Where does the president come from? What environment did he grow up in? What party is the ruling party in Liberia? It came from the opposition. What things have been addressed to that? Some of the social ills have been addressed. Yes, when you look at overall government performance, it's disappointing. But there are aspects in the society that have progressed where you and I can sit on a platform today and talk about our differences with, irrespective of our background. There are things that have also progressed there. So we should not just throw the baby out with the bath water. The government is be, be, be performing poorly. We all agree on that. We want to see changes. Let's fall forward to Mr. Costa owning devil. Mr. Costa is going there, but the Senate is full of people who have no integrity. How do we prepare ourselves for Mr. Costa to go and be successful? Or do we say back again that when he gets there, we say, oh, Costa have joined them. Yes, because there's a majority of people who want to do the wrong thing. And that's the nature of what we're trying to fight. So it's not to say every time we try, it will be successful. But in 2023, there has to be an effort again. We must consistently put the effort to level the political playing field, to tap into the nation's talent, to bring the old and the new together. Like Miata said, to remember history and teach it to new people who can carry it on. And that takes a collective effort. It's not the effort on the basis of who made what error, who supported who. No, there's thousands and hundreds of thousands of people who voted. It's a certain mindset, it's a certain ideology that caused people to believe in that cause. And so it's just not one individual. We propel it. We put gas in the car, but we didn't purchase the car. We didn't push the car. There were Liberians behind the car. And some of them are there still today, and they are still disappointed. And some of them are out, and they are still disappointed. It's lending a united voice to say, I wasn't there, but I want the best for Liberia. I was there, not 100%, but I want the best for Liberia. I was there 100%. I understand the error, I understand the lapses. I want the best for Liberia. That's a collective sense of where we go. And that's what I choose to focus on, on like decisions made because it's, it's, it's actions that drew the reaction. Whether it's from the CDC or the Liberian people, there were certain actions that drew those reactions. If we continue to repeat those actions, like corruption, like theft, if we continue to repeat those actions, will continue to get the same reactions from our people. Thank you, Josh. Um, Costa. Um, <clears throat> Brother Lobo, to answer your question, what you don't understand, I think, is that I'm a student of politics, by, by the way. I have my bachelor's degree in uh, public policy, policy and government. Politics is not based on uh, for the people. 
at least mm -hmm. when it comes to elections, is, is emotional. It's not based on policies. It's not based on platforms. The people are driven by their emotions. Even the greatest democracy in the world, the people voted for Trump because he was able to stoke their fears. He was able to embody uh, the things they had been saying at their dinner tables that they would not be able to say publicly themselves. The last segment, the large segment of the people that supported George Weir, the last segment of our population that gravitated to George Weir, did so because the political elites failed them. And that is the truth. A country 175 years old, we don't have electricity. We don't have water. Internet is bad. Unemployment 70 something percent. Our country is miserable because of the successive administrations we've had. George Weah is what you get as a result of letting the people down for so long. That's who you get. Now, to answer your question, so the people moved to George Weah because they believe that George Weah, the guys around George Weah were able to build this hype that this guy came from this place and he became this global star and he had all his money, which we all know, Solo knows, Weah was very, very broke. He had no money at all. But they all helped to carry on this hype and this life for so long. And what they did was they, 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 they were able to emasculate that Weah was a broke man. And, and so people believe that Weah was so rich and successful. He owned all these businesses all over the world, but that was not the truth. But they carried that line. So many people believe that. And so the people saw him like this guy who was able to break himself free from the shackles of poverty. He would be able to do that with the rest of us. He didn't tell him any plans. He didn't tell him how he would do it. But they felt he would be able to do it because he did it for himself. Now, the... The, the second part of your question was, Mr. Lobo, what, what was it? You are muted. You are muted, George. What would be your two key areas? Your two key areas oh, good. Of, uh, in the okay, Senate, knowing how terrible, pathetic the Labyrinth legislature has been performing over the years for our people? Well, I've never been to the Senate, neither have I been in any legislative position, but I think I have a fair appreciation of what happens there. Uh, I think Senator Dillon and one or two other senators are trying their very best, but they are a very tiny min min minority in a cesspool of people who are obsessed and fixated upon their own parochial interests, as opposed to exercising the constitutionally given and granted powers to benefit the people. But I think, for example, what lastly Senator Dillon has embodied and exemplified is been a, is the symbolism of opposition, the symbolism of being in disagreement with the status quo in the Senate or in the legislature. And on a number of, of occasions, he has worked very hard to exercise some of those oversight responsibilities. Now, when I go to the, I say when because I believe we will win. When I go to the Senate and join Senator Dillon and others there, there are a number of things I believe I can do from there. And I believe that they would not be able to, uh, it would make no sense for anybody to oppose some of, some of, some of those things. The healthcare sector, for example, is, is badly broken. I know a great many Liberians who would not return to live in Liberia because the healthcare is bad for them. They would die. It would be a virtual, I mean, a literal death sentence if they did go back home. I have a proposal, a bill that we're going to craft. It's in my head for the time being, but we're going to craft it. This bill is going to be called the National Healthcare Reform Act. And here's how it's going to work. We're going to levy taxes called sin taxes on alcoholic beverages, tobacco products, and gambling activities. This these sin taxes will be generated and the funds and the proceeds would go into an escrow account called a national health care uh, fund. And from this fund, we would do two things. One, we, we would hire the best doctors from Cuba. You know, Cuban, Cuba has the best, best health care system, not America, contrary to what people think. Mm -hmm. We will go to Cuba and bring <coughs> specialist doctors, neurosurgeons, cardiologists, epidemiologists, you name it, all these specialist doctors that we don't have in our country to provide the specialist medical services that Liberians have to go to Ghana or India or America currently to seek. We would bring these doctors to Liberia on a five-year contract paid for by the millions of dollars generated from the sin taxes levied on these three different things I named. We would pay these doctors, provide them housing and transportation, and then take Liberian general practitioners, medical doctors, 
who are not specialized and send them abroad to countries such as Cuba and India and even the U.S. to specialize in these fields so that when they to return after the five years so have lapsed, they would be able to assume the responsibilities that these specialist doctors who would be uh, brought in and deployed across major hospitals across the country to provide specialist medical services to people who otherwise would not be able to, to attain those services in Liberia. Now, when my Mary has a heart problem that requires a surgery, she would be able to go to the hospital under the skin and be seen by the best cardiologist there is without paying one red copper. The reason is, when Stephen Johnson drinks a bottle of Heineken, or saying that Dylan drinks the, what Savannah you like, Draft. Savannah Dry. The Savannah Dry. Every time he drinks a, a Savannah Dry, or when I smoke my, my Cohiba, my, my Cuban cigar, or the one from Dominican, every time I do that in Liberia, a few cents would be added to those things, to, to those commodities that would pay that Cuban doctor and procure the equipment, the instruments that doctor would use to perform an open heart surgery on my, my, my Mary in Liberia that, that she would otherwise not be able to afford to get in Liberia. We would make that possible. They would be able to get that kind of treatment in Liberia where they want to get another scheme. Stephen Johnson and I were talking about is the other thing. It's the National Social Security, the Social Security Benefit Scheme for, for, for the elderly, people over the age of 65. We would levy 50 cents, 25 cents on every ton of iron ore exported out of our country, every ton of rubber, every ton of, uh, you, you name it, oil palm, so that the funds generated therefrom will go into an, an, an account managed by a private, a, a private agency that will issue out these cards to, to the elderly so that every month they will go and cash out and receive at least 100 US dollars as a financial assistance program for the elderly. They should be able to receive that. So we have a number of schemes that we will bring to the legislature. Why would Senator Dillon support such a bill? Because it makes sense and because it would not be adding any extra it financial burden. Itself. Yeah, it will fund itself. So nobody will say, oh, why is this bill? Because when even Senator Dillon gets sick or when I get sick, I will be able to receive the same specialist treatment in Liberia performed by a very highly trained Cuban doctor that I would have to go to Ghana or India or America to, re to receive. So this would be holistic. It would benefit the entirety of the country and not just a few people. And by, and by that, we would be able to extend the life expectancy of our people and reduce the, unnecessary high, the unnecessarily high mortality rates in the country. Those are just two of the things that I will bring to the Senate. Uh, I, I'm, afraid, I'm afraid that with a we few months still left with the team that they one of them will steal your proposal and put it on the floor as a bill. Ah, uh, no, they would not have the expertise to develop the, uh, the, 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 the meat. But, but uh, you know, I hope uh, Solo will have come back. Um, I don't see him now in studio. But uh, one of the questions I wanted to ask uh, uh, Solo was, uh, uh, when you when you when you're looking for a leader, one of the things you look for is you do a historical analysis about the person, so that you can be able to make a determination that that person will have or has some kind of leadership traits, or skill set, or ability to at least transform the broader country. You know, in terms of the context. You know, and, and if you look at we are from his from his own past life, you know, he 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 old school nightclub collapsed. His uh, we are sports center collapsed. A GM professional soccer club collapse. So there was a pattern here that we are could not even manage his, his personal resources so to the extent to the extent that all of his investment proof proof footer they all collapsed because of poor management. Now there were news about some kind of mineral water factory somewhere in East Africa. We've never seen a battle of that water before. Talk about the water itself. So yeah. with that kind of with that kind of history, with that kind of trend. What 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 specifically, other than the fact that we are was popular, drove people like Solo, you know, the likes of other guys into believing that we are will transform Liberia. I thought Solo would come so that we can ask that question because it gives us the perspective to what in the CDC they were thinking that will you know that they have the slightest thought that we are will make a better president besides I the fact the that question, we are, was popular. But I the question, Steve. Let, 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 let's hear for him, then uh, Enter Miata can go, 
No, I don't have a question. I don't think I have a comment. Uh, I lost the show along the way, and so I would like to follow, listen well before I can come in. But I thought Hammer is uh, proposing something very, very serious and relevant and important. And these are the kind of solution driven bills and partners we're looking for in the legislature. I've always said you can articulate well, you can show anger, you can be righteously angry when things go wrong. But if you don't have the number to vote, if you don't have that number, forget it. The only thing you will be remember about is that you were angry about something, you disagree with something, but that very thing you were angry about or that you disagree with, it passed because there was no number. And that is why I say, I'm going to put my everything like Costa did, like all of you did. I'm going to put my everything in Costa's campaign. Somebody said it's too early to talk about it. Yes, it's early, and that's the time to talk about, about it. I'm going to put my everything behind Henry for us to win this election in 2023. I want a partner I can rely on. Like we have Yeke Koloba in the house. You, you need more of Yeke's, not necessarily the way he presents his issues, but the surety, the guarantee that you will vote the way we should vote for the people. And so, yes, I don't have much to say for now. I will listen and I will follow the show. And if I have to ask questions, I will ask. I don't want to deviate from the topic on, 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 on going now. So I have a question for Costa, but after this topic, okay, so even though, two, even though I should be his campaign <laughs> manager if he will appoint me, but I have I have two questions for him after this topic. Yeah, but I think he's, he's gone off. So we'll, we'll hear for Ente Miata, Pia, then we'll open the lines. And when he rejoins, um, then we can pick up on that. But Senator, stick around. We need to use your phone to, to talk to our people. So Ente Miata can go briefly, then Pia, then we'll open the lines. Uh, before before Ente Miata come, are you hearing me? Yeah, mm -hmm. hearing me. Is that how you you hearing me? Yes. yes. Is it Rene? Yeah, I think he's having uh, challenges. Okay, you know, got internet problem in two days in Latvia. And, and the rain on the show. Yeah, yeah, the internet problem is terrible in Latvia in last two days. Yeah, yeah. You know, as on the show, somebody said uh, I should start being cheerleader to Costa. Yeah, somebody said I should start being cheerleader to Costa. Costa was cheerleader to me. <laughs> and no, I want numbers. I want people no, who can believe in you. I want people who can fight together with you. So being cheerleader, being cheerleader for Costa campaign, I'm good with it. Thank I you. stand with it, and my face to it, my everything to it, and I'm going to take Costa to the Senate. Thank you. Let, let, let you have to enter me other then PR briefly, then we'll open the line. Okay, I was going to say to Costa that I'm so very, very proud at his health care bill. Fifteen years ago, when the Chinese came to Liberia, Liberians were very opposed to the Chinese because they were socialists. I think Mr. Costa is gonna have the same problem. Cuba is a socialist country. We have proposed the Cuban doctors coming in in the past 15 years, but because of the sentiments of the Liberian people vis-a-vis -vis Cuba is socialist, China is socialist. I wish him luck on that. On the Lehman Bowie um, advice, look, my people, I have a very good memory. In 2005, I think we had about 20 candidates. 
The election came down to the Unity Party and the CDC. And the Vani Sherman of LAP, Al Haji Kroma of Alco, Dr. Tobana Tipote of LPP, every single opposition member went to the CDC. So Joshua, yeah, including Prince Johnson. Prince Johnson, everybody. I don't want to call my brother name, but Dr. Fambule was the only one with Dr. Sawyer and others and Dr. who supported the Joseph United Party. Yeah. Now with that coalition in 205, why didn't they win? 2011, they put Winston Tutman and George Weir. Why didn't they win? We came to 2017. The election was rigged in the favor of George Weir. Now everybody can be, um, how do they put it? Philosophically, or give me statistics, or give me the, the election was rigged in the favor of George Weir. So I'm not one of those who has a problem with 10, 15 opposition coming into the race. At the end of the day, there are gonna be two candidates. I am confident mm -hmm. that the Unity Party can wrest power from the CDC. Now, when you say we should get together, in 2017, I remember clearly the ANC withholding their votes from the Unity Party. It gave instruction that everybody should vote for whoever they wanted. Senator Dillon, your party, the Liberty Party, again, stood by itself and said everybody should make their choice. Why is it this 2023, everybody want us to get together? Why? We don't have the same ideology. We don't. And we don't trust others. I don't think we should just get together because we want to dislodge George Weir because the problem will come after. When we've all come together to make sure that Weir doesn't win, afterwards, there are going to be demands and struggle, et cetera, et cetera. Let everybody go their way. The two who come, we deal with them. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, so I'm kind of I'm kind of confused. So we 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 let him go. The other two topics, right, Stevie? We just we just yeah yeah because the okay. time we can't do that with today on Wednesday. All right, so since we have time, no, but I'm, I'm also here. I'm also here, Pierre. So if you have any question for me, yeah, since we have time constraint, you, Stevie, has said you had a question for George and John were outside. Yeah, <laughs> so you have that question first. Okay, so George, it's good that you here. My 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 question was, um, if you look at the trend of George Weir own own private investment. For example, he ran an old school net club that collapsed. He, he he ran a sports center, it collapsed. He ran a GM professional football team that collapsed. So in terms of we are own 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 managerial skills in terms of managing his own private wealth or his private investment, he became a flop. So what what other because this is these things happen pre 2005. Most of these collapse happened pre 2005 and the year leading up to 20. And that's why level. that's why it was interesting to hear Costa when he said the people misled the people he talked about who misled includes him. So so yeah because what, no, 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 no,
Okay. It, it, it's like you're looking at even Senator Dillon, who's on this call, who I would say he's the closest we have to a public official on this call. The way he manages his personal wealth is different from my expectation of him on our national wealth. The check and balances that we have on national wealth is different from Senator Dillon going in his account, in a private account, and say, I feel like doing this. Let's be realistic and let's put these conversations in context. That is not how politicians are measured. How much Bronski had in an account? How much Joseph Boga had in an account? How much job we have made? How much he lost? This is not how you are measured. You are measured against the management of an entity. The management of government, taxpayer money is quite different. So, 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 so what do you look at before you think I can manage uh, uh, taxpayer money? Well, one, like we, we like we talked earlier, personal integrity. Two, the next thing I will look at is even if you decide, if you have integrity and you decide to go out of that integrity line, how are we holding you by the law and by policy accountable for that? And, and that's why I keep stressing on the show, we are looking at personal attributes. But let's look at in a holistic way how America had a Trump and how the system was able to contain him in a way that America did not employ. The question that keeps coming up is, George, we are George, we are fine. We're talking more about the presidency. We're talking more about if you have a president, the caliber of George Weir, how do we curtail them and sustain our democracy? That's the main question rather than, oh, the issue of him. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 is someone who is in a position. Ellen was in it yesterday. Samuel Doe was in it before. Mr. Taylor was in it before. Those are all individuals, different ages, different backgrounds different orientations, but yet they were the president of the Republic of Liberia. And sometimes when we look at George Weir, rather than be going back to this, what did you see, what did you not see, the general concept is whoever saw that, however the majority was built, when someone assumed leadership, we should all be ready to hold them accountable. Thank you. I think I think that's a fair, that's a fair answer. Uh, I don't know what is happening to the senator from who wanted to open the lines. Uh, uh, um, He's seen before go. Can I squeeze in real quick for uh the chairman? Yeah, 10 seconds, real quick. Oh, chairman solo, real quick. Uh, I want to thank you first and foremost. You you've been very spot on, on a lot of issues yet. Uh, the Liberian people currently, the economy is what really measures the success productivity of the government and well the people are doing. You are on record of speaking about the poor performance of the current finance minister. Yet then, President, we are, have done absolutely nothing to act as the commander in chief. Uh, we speak, you have uh, been speaking about the systems and accountability. What will you say to the Liberian people, given the performance of their current finance minister? And what is your own assessment in terms of economic performance from the CDC government? Look, both personally and as a Liberian, we all know that the failure is massive. Um, it, you can't even rate economic performance when you have no economy. You have no product that you are exporting. You have nothing. Everything is based on taxpayers' money. Um, uh, things are difficult. The educational system is a flop. The healthcare system is a flop. The president continues to parade as if, as if nothing is going on. And it's the defensive mechanism that must be put down. When people speak in the interest of Liberia, let's listen and get better. It's not about you or them or us. No, everybody can tell you now that even people calling you from Liberia, 90% of the time will be to request help. The U.S. sanction imposition is very clear that corruption is very high in our government. We all know it. The coffers are being bled dry. Competence to contribute to the development of the nation is very low. We know these things. These are not secrets. The senator and everybody have spoken about these things. We all understand the exist, but we need to build a unified front to go against it. Simply because Liberia will not progress without them and us mentality. Liberia will not progress when the people who speak the truth are the enemies of the state. Exactly. Liberia will not progress when we have no best practices 
and your biggest association with government is either to get elected or to be the friend of the person in the office to appoint you and that based on your competence once we try to continue to live by those old ways our republic will continue to die by the old ways so when you are speaking it's not directly in terms of who is there or who was there it's where do we want liberia to go you know and just like you said when i retrospect are there things that we could do differently absolutely are there things we could say differently absolutely but does any of those things matter in this instance that we find ourselves no, it does not. What matters most is the, the psychology that we have and how we move forward. Because all we will do if we decide to go back with all the willingness to be honest and take our force where we should, the only thing we'll do is we'll switch blames. And I've never seen a team or a nation build and develop based on blames. They do it to Senator Dillon now. Why you didn't do this? Why you sign this? Why you sign that? Nobody thinks about the battles and decisions you go through on a day-to-day -day basis as a leader. Nobody thinks about it. Jimmy, are we going on the street? Even the person who asking you, are we going on the street? They're not thinking about their life. But let them get shot tomorrow that just don't put them outside. We, we can't build a nation around this thought. We, we, we have to change the way we think. We have to say, yes, this is the CDC. You know what? It's a Liberian institution. It promised us certain things. If it doesn't deliver it, we'll hold that CDC accountable. Whoever contributed to bringing it up is irrelevant. It's who willing to contribute to change the dimension of what's going on. So, because in that, we have numbers. Yes. Jolie, yeah. May I ask you a question? Yes. My question is straight jacket. Who are you looking forward to, to 2023? Knowing all that you know, where are you leaning? Where are you going? What are your thoughts? You know all of the issues that's happening in the country. You know, and we all are clear that George Weir does not want a second term. I have said, as for George Weir in second term, he has told me and the Liberian people, he does not want to run 2023 where he would be on a ballot. We should just look at his attitude, his activity now, and don't vote him. He is speaking to us with an eye contact to say, you see me, and you're coming by that your business. When your children die, I can go to the play park to go play. When the children missing, corruption all over the place, I can't say anything. And you're coming by that your business. That man is speaking to us by action, that him walk on my head. We all know we are for me. I'm clear I'm decided that George Weir doesn't deserve a second term. We all know we are shortcoming. I'm not going to fault you or anybody for making a case for Weir. I was making a case for Bronskin. He could have screwed up, but he didn't win. So we can still talk about Bronskin today. We all know what George Weir is now. We're all looking to a future, a tomorrow. What are you looking at, 2023, Josh? Good question. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Senator. You see, where am I leaning? Yeah, what I'm are you looking at? I, I know you're not looking at George yeah. 2023. He, he, uh, nothing left in George. We have to change anything. So yeah, what are you looking at? I, I agree with you. I agree with you on that point. Yeah. 2023, I'm leaning in it. Last day, um, you know what? <laughs> yeah, last day, um. yeah. <laughs> my Lord I and like Savior that. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, I like that. That I was last day, oh, um, oh. show direction. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. That, that, that spiritual connection. <laughs> Stevie. Yeah, but George, on a serious note, Stevie, 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 yeah. Stevie, Stevie, I have a follow up question to that. Mm. But for me, instead of asking George where he's leaning, I want to ask George, are you still a member of the CDC? <laughs> no. no, Pia. Okay. Yes. Pia. Yes, sir. You got to have a way of degrading people. Yeah, oh. don't come in, George, <laughs> very man. And you, you, you calling me to be a member <laughs> of the people there who they running behind with sexual? Keep that membership where I walk clean right now. <laughs> Don't just let us start all kind of things. Who want that kind of membership? Who there with a membership that's running away from it? I'm going to go to him. 
But George, 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 hey, 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 George, you are, you are uh, uh, solo, you are, you are an opinion leader in Liberia, you are former mm. party chairman, mm. you, you, who, who what, what, and, and I'll, and I'll use, I'll follow up on Senator Taylor, um, uh, um, there are, there are technically, as we know, there are four candidates in the race, um, as far as we know. What is clear, Stevie? And they don't, they don't say the thing here. Or simple English, you won't bring people on it. I tell you, what man. is clear is whether you want to name the three people that grandmother or oh. I said right now leaning on the everlasting arm. Um. <laughs> 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 like leave it there, yeah. <laughs> but you know, then, for then you right there, no, but they don't, in all honesty, right. in all honesty, my support, my heart, and my hope for like real life in the opposition. I can be clear about that. Lies in the opposition. Okay. <laughs> I can be very clear about that. But in terms of that, the SI here, then I didn't yeah, that's, a smart, that's a smart <laughs> answer. Go in that direct. Yeah, we but you know, uh, 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 Stevie, we have we have we we have a role here. Uh Georgie, uh uh, yeah. uh George Lobo and Pia and Anthony Biata and all of us. George has given us indication that he supports the opposition, which is good. Now, which Opposition is supporting is left to us now to go not after to him. So I have, we, 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 we have a role, we have a role to play there. Everywhere God will lead us. Oh. Right. <laughs> Johnny, you hear myself for him. We're on a 50 thing. We'll continue to make the case. Yeah, no, 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 my PIE won't come to after the children of, of Israel were leaving Egypt. Did they care who was in front there? You just wanted to get oh, out of that desk. I don't want to do that for a good. I think we need to open the land for a few minutes. Moses go make beer and go out there on him. Yeah, so you can announce the number. <laughs> yeah, you can go ahead and announce the number. So um, we'd like to open the phone lines. Uh, The phone numbers are um 0777 That's a call-in number, and that same number can be used for WhatsApp. That is 077 510588 for those overseas the number is uh plus one four zero one six eight 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 two six six plus one four oh one six eight 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 two six six again our local okay, number so is... we have the first call okay, here on the local number uh hold it live one second let me put your speaker Oh, <laughs> uh, Eddie, thank you very much for the program. Uh, the question to Harold Costa. The step when he told us, I want for you to be sure for all the girl, for all the day, for me to give my phone to him. Maybe hundred percent sure and ask to the to you people. Yes, tomorrow if you see you will win a catable. But this is a step that he used and a change his country. This is the step that the president used to change his country. If he can be saying that today and saying that yes, he will do the same. Actually, I'm very happy to hear from him. And you people should consider you all good. Thank you. Thank you. I like this caller. It's stuck to the to the to the time, man. Hello, caller. Your name and what are you calling from? Yeah. Good evening. Uh, I was not making a school senator. Uh, there is Stephen Niaman Benda, and I found me from the commercial hub of Bond County, total to, to be precise. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you so very kindly, eh? and I, I'm religiously following the show via the internet, and like I said, I'm following from District No. 6, the Honorable Representative of the Mormon Prisoners of District, and I just want to salute all of you, including our own mother, Mother, uh, mother Mianta. I mean, you guys are, are truly uh, nationalistic and uh, patriotic in your discussion. And I just want to uh, call on uh, Honorable George Solo to please join the, the VOECON so that we all can uh, support Ambassador Joseph Newman Bwakai to serve the people of Liberia come 2023. Thank you so very kindly. May God bless all of you and may God bless Mama Liberia and save his state. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so kindly. Yeah. yeah. Call on your name and where you calling from? Oh, lost that one. 
Brother, brother, mm. call on your name and where you calling from? Okay, this is the voice of the tough talking. This is why I give Lord Junior and I call you from Johnsonville. What may you tough talking? <laughs> because I'm a luminary, a rudy, young visionary, professional, robust, firebrand, intellectual. Hey, okay, go ahead. Oh, my Lord. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, I want to thank uh, the, the Honorable Veteran Intellectual in uh, 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 George Sulu for his kind uh, can deliberation. But my only disappointment is that uh, he has not been explicit in it comes to where he is. If he had, yeah, he has not, uh, you know, you know, come up with any conclusion as to where to be, where to be, I want to encourage him as a joint lecturer to join the JMB movement. Thank you. Thank you. Senator, let me take this call. Then let me take this call. Let me go on the last call. Where you calling from? Hello. Hello, your name and where you calling from? I'm Brother Imo Vima Sari from Bassa. From Grand Bassa, go ahead. Yeah, at this hour, Mr. Didi, I just want to have some leave. So, when you say three or four, you're not going to national call. You're going to be going to national call. I'm going to be going to national call. I'm going to be going to national call. Into, uh, into the silence and by the special grace of God who will give him the strength and the power for him to, to select him because I believe he, is, he has been selected by God. But I don't want him to come like a meant in me, but to meant to in the parents, even those who are against him. I want Kosa to come like a light, a light in the Bible, not a light on the earth, but a light in the Bible. That the Lord said he make us in his own image in likeness. The image in the Bible there represented the light. And the likeness is representing the righteousness of a man. I believe in these two words, the light and the righteousness, he will come with it in the house. And at the end of the day, he will be a casanat uh, to those who don't want to do it. Let's look at our brothers and sisters today suffering. But they are suffering because of ignorance. They decided to take liquor food for them to vote for these people. You know, one thing I can always tell the leaders, even Mr. Delon, you, yes, we voted for you, we do it love. But you people are taking us as a political tools. At the end of the day, you people can need, I mean, you people can see us at the time you are in power, when the power has been expired. You people will be coming around and be inspiring us what ought to be voting for you. But if Costa coming into the house, will be the better thing. It will give the light to the Senate. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Then let, let's hear you. International call from Pia. Pia. Hello, caller. Senator, let's hear what international call. Sherry? He's Hello, not Sherry? hearing you. Habib? Habib, Sherry, on the WhatsApp line from America. Okay, I think we're losing that. Pia, go ahead. Pia, go ahead. Call off from Minnesota again, go ahead. My name is Alvin Potos, A-L-V-I-N, last name spelled K-P-O-T-O. I was concerned, I was concerned about uh, what Costa said concerning his uh, concept that you have of breaking doctors from Cuba and helping the healthcare system. I believe, second, I believe that it won't work. The reason why is that you don't have a system in place. For you able to bring doctors for across other nations to come to your country, you need to incentivize them, incentivize them, give them a good place to live, money so to pay them. Work because you you know, you know, you doctors sending them across the So, country. so you already know what's supposed to make it to work. Why are you saying it will not work? <laughs> well, well, we have to, we have to dissect this. What the color, what the color is indicating so that there has to be institutions. Or let me end, you still let me end. Okay, caller. I think we, I think we got your point. Thank you. <sighs> okay, and I think, I think again, and, again, and Dylan, hello, caller. Your name, where are you calling from on the WhatsApp number? Dylan, know we experienced this with his campaign as well. When you're running for elected office, you have to be ambitious. Yeah. yeah. Three o one. What's up? Yes, hi. Uh, my my name is Charles. Come again. Yeah, my my name is Charles. Um, I was calling because I had a little concern. I was listening to everything everybody said. I actually calling on any platform. But my main point of what I see for being here is the We can. Uh, we can lose you. Yeah, we can barely hear you. 
you lose that part, you lose that color. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we hear you. He should call yeah. the American number if it's overseas, it's better. If the overseas, the American, the, the right. overseas what number is there. What I'm saying is, any changes that need to be done, okay, any changes that is needed to be done for a country to be Call it real no, call we can't get it. Call on from America, go ahead. Call on the land from America, go ahead. Hello? Hello? <laughs> wow. The calls are so many. Hello, call on your name and where are you calling from? My Joseph is calling. My own Jew. Yeah, your oh man. What's up? I think I'm getting call so I'm so happy to hear John talking on the line. And I thank God, thank you for for today. I thank God, thank you. I live in John once again. I live to make John Bakal the next president for 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 Labro 你们是谁？你们是谁？你们是谁？你们是谁？你们是谁？你们是谁？你们是谁？你们是谁？你们是谁？你们是谁？你们是谁？你们是谁？你们是谁？你们是谁？你们是谁？你们是谁？你们是
it's in the present. It's not in the past. I think I, I have a word of caution for all of you who sit on the uh, social media, those of you who are the pontificators and navigators discussing the issues. I think the key word to the opposition is to imagine, is to come together, and the centrality of it keep Liberia as the least common denominator. The need for change is eminent in Liberia. Thank you, sir. Like thank you, thank you, thank you. Cut off, cut off on the US, go ahead. Hello? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, good. My name is Kenneth Harris. Um, I'm calling from Seattle, Washington. But I have a question for Aaron Costa. Is he available? No, Costa, we have to no. Costa, Costa, okay, Costa, so Costa, that I'll one. Get a question, and I'll get a question directly to Senator Elon, who are volunteer to be his uh, campaign manager. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, okay, Senator Dillon, when I follow you, the first time you went for the election, I look at all of your experience that you work on, on a representative, a senator, that you served there for a number of years. And he was accepted at the Temple of Justice. Now, Aaron Costa has decided to run as Senator. Senator Dillon, can you please tell me the experience when it's come to government that Aaron Costa is bringing on to the House of Representatives of the Senate? Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I will respond to you before the close of the show. Let me take this caller. Uh, hello, caller, your name and where are you calling from? Well, let me put you on speaker. Hello, your name and where are you calling from? Yes, I'm calling from Tishina. A pilot, Tishina, Siaman, BSS, on our senator, who came to my former senator, former chairman, Joe Soro, who came to my president, General Apia, who came to enter Miata. Thank God so much to all my children. We wish you people and we pray for you. And this government keeps the power to the end. The government told the Liberian people that we are not going to be spectator. You cannot do comparison with the power of the Russian or Manasari government when they call me. All the kind of fearmen, they are my brothers who enter.
a moral error. They are the former places. So we will do our analysis. Let's look at all these things. That will be nice. Unity is a matter of most. Two, I listen to Joshua, uh, Mr. Joshua. And for me, I identify some level of this in GNTP analysis. Because the problem wasn't created by this It was people that created the problem. Because the way the problem they created for the CDC. So the problem you put created, like we have level had a long thing in the CDC. Like, uh, uh, I don't call it, don't know what What were the indicators? You people saw, or you put it. Mohamed Ali Aizam, have you not supported any politician before who you believe and they let it down? Yeah, no one has been to me before. Before I support you, I look at you for up and steady. Yeah, no one let me that the one support you. No, for them, for them, for them. Anybody else? I'm going to tell you more about it. 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 Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you got call there. Yeah, yeah. Somebody be on the line for long. Go ahead, call up from. Uh, we take five more calls and then we go. Yeah, the overseas people can can stay on the line long. Good because they. Please, please talk a little louder, Chairman. Chairman, come from Minnesota. I do have several concerns. Um. Let me first appreciate the guest, uh, George Solo. George Solo, you've won my admiration this evening from my end. I saw Andy Meata came down so hard on you. You exhibited a high level of intelligence. I haven't seen that on some other shows around here as a guest. You have put up a defensive front, but I appreciate you for that. You really may, or thank you for being that. So such a kind person you were. Um, my concern has to do with uh, Steve Johnson is always announcing a lot of radio stations that are not actually relaying this show. I know we the uh, opposition, we are very slow in doing things. <laughs> and I say this to say, all of these radio stations with all of the good information on here, we cannot be naming radio stations that are not relaying the show because most often I ask my people, are you guys hearing it from this place or that place? No, it's just music on the radio. And then there was somebody that brought up some uh, information. So can you, can you give a specific So, so can, you, can you give an instance of a particular radio station we announced in that not broadcasting the show? Exactly. 98.1. I what, don't know the particular. Why not everyone want to know that? Bush Radio is off. Hi, Kaysom. Bush Radio. Yes, I'm going to Radio. The only time when I come and say they have uh, technical issues, but other than that, Bush Radio, Bush Radio, Bush Radio is one of the regular radio stations that carry the show, and when they have technical problems, they do let us know in advance, though. But okay, we'll take none of that. We'll take none of that. There was a point of time wherein uh, on the show, a call of call, uh -huh. and made a point of uh, an opposition having a radio station. I don't know if it is all county in person of uh, Prince Moe. the Honorable Man Prince Moe. Yeah. I don't know how can he be an opposition and can I spare one minute on this radio station to air this good program. I think you guys have to work in collaboration to have these things be heard because that caller said there's no <coughs> radio station that, that airs this program in Bone County. I stand to be corrected to. Yeah, so we, we're working on that. We have been in conversation with, with Senator Mwe, so we're surprised that if the station were not airing it and we're working on the, the details to so ensure that the program is aired on Senator Mwe's station. Thank you for those concerns. Yeah, because it's, it's currently overseas. And lastly, I have one question for uh, Josh Lobo. Uh -huh. um, my concern has to do with... Uh, I appreciate his presence on the show. He's very eloquent and he addressed the issue. But my concern is this. Uh, I don't know what is unfolding since the new leadership of the United Party. We are not hearing much. We haven't seen much. I don't know what is the expectation or what are they looking up to. Because my disappointment was the manner in which they handled those uh, election results back then in Lofa. Are they going to slow the pace and wait for the timeline given by NEC before they start to move on again? 
what is being done differently with the Unity Party. I would definitely like to see more from you know, and Amos coming on the show and remaining. I hope the internet works perfectly. Thank you for the thank time. You, thank you. Uh, um, hello, caller, your name and where are you calling from? Yeah, I'm Timothy Sonny Boss Smith calling from Grand Bassa County. Holy oh, Bassa people. Yeah. Bassa Bunny, let it show you. Thank you so much, Nathan. Thank you so much. I'm so proud of you. I have no regret voting for you because today you make my day. You see, look, 2023 is right here. People that are talking about indecision, we are not talking about indecision, we are out in the middle of our mind because that's why we are first soldier. Mm -hmm. Thank God to Senator Dillon that we give all our support to Henry P. Costa from Montserrat. And he know what we can do here. Look, today I have no regret to, because when I move on the street of Montserrat, when I move in Grand Basel County, when I go to the street, people say, yeah, Timothy, you have to work for us at Montserrat, Montserrat County for, for voting for Senator Dillon. And he said, like, he is not perfect, but we stream with him, we support him with everything. But 2023 is a day that we Liberians will, will put our country first. That's why we are talking about supporting the political institution and the support of political leader. That we are telling president, we are that 2023 will make him one term president. And Joseph Neiman Parker, I believe, and I support 2023. And I want to on the fee because if you have a leader, if you have a king, the king to have a, a soldier of you on the on the on the battlefield and and, and, and winning 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 a uh, battle for him. That twenty twenty three, we are saying in most of the country around uh, our, our, our our country that uh, Joseph Nima Buaka and Nyombi Kanga Lawela, we believe him. I don't know about you. That we told more than twenty twenty three, we tell our people the way forward now is the two people that we believe that can connect our country that is drowning on the president. We are. He told us that we will not be spectators about today in telling us why war crack now. When we are talking about development, why is the development? Monrovia is not Liberia, but I'm standing here greeting for Grand Basel County, for 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 Lofa, for number four, for number five, for number three. But people are listening. Thank you, Jim. Bravo to you, uh, uh, Costa. I say bravo to Dilo. Thank you. We're watching you. Uh, God bless that people. We 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 remove President. We are. Thank you, Zabe. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, your name. Where are you calling from? Uh, uh, uh class reloaded. I'm also candidate. This is something matter. When are they class here? Uh, you're taking over in Basel. Hey, you know what's going on? Our radio station here, like. I don't know, Cloud Reader, really, but I said, it's spirit of Reader really, Juba, HN. A blasting, it, like they want to post it, the, 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 the transmitter tonight. Because, because one giant is on Cloud Reader really, really, tonight, and the whole of Grand Battle listening to Henry Costa and they start hearing on the giant, Senator Dino, and tonight you are back there. So, I mean, uh, it is, it is, it is cry tonight. Now, to the, to the issue, you know, uh, uh, Costa said something that, like, when he analyzed uh, uh, Lima Bowie uh, topic in Atlanta or wherever, and uh, in the opposition, not together. And then Costa said, a main working fish. But I will go to a main working fish to say, come and join me. Somebody who owe presidency somewhere, somebody on the planet. I don't know whether that in, in Mercury or in, in Pluto, he owe presidency. Because somebody who don't owe Senator Dillon will not come and let me go cop out and pay him. So, like, coming who owe presidency, so if I'm not president, they are with that. They are so eager to be president in this place. Just have a way. In no way, we say, uh, let me, you be the first who can first. So, I'm really in general, you know, that part that he analyzed that whole thing. Yeah, our people in Grand can they got the understand today. And if today was election, I think uh, I think uh, something would be said for Grand Master County. So uh, class reloaded, we just want to tell the people of Liberia. Why are you Why are you Our TK is Senator Nyobi Kanga Lauren will continue to say, Senator Nyobi Kanga Lauren, and any opposition, even from this from Grand Master County, and we, we, we are tied up. Uh, we're not losing until 2023. If you if you if you if you want to win Grand Basel County, you must go with Senator Nyobi Kanga Lawrence. Thank you very much. Yeah, 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 one, one, one second, one second, one second. Yeah, uh, uh, 
so uh, so uh, so just from Israel to Christ. So the living from Israel to Christ. Thank God that he living for Israel to hear in this evening. That was that was that was pushed and reloaded this evening in Grandma's country to hear solo one solo judge. Yeah, one solo judge from Israel to Christ. So coming from Israel to Christ to win victory twenty twenty three. But then you haven't you haven't been following John Solo because he's been on that plane for a while. Yeah, but that was say from Egypt to Christ. So he came from Egypt. He been on a long time. Oh, DJ CDC is a great deal of God for John Solo. I mean, don't be just for a poor Ben Ayo. The Bogan Mupa or John Solo, the same way we went to the Bogan Mupa, the Rekosa, the Bogan Mupa, 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 Ah, the local number. Sorry, 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 you got American people on the direct number. Let them start calling you on WhatsApp. Let the people be on the line for I don't know how long. I got it. Uh, the number call. call. Yeah, every time they call the WhatsApp number, the local number. Yeah, my question is, Senator Dillon, what are you coming to do to America? You coming to campaign or what are you coming to do? Because you already well, have so we a name. Well, yeah, name is back. Sure. I didn't get him, man. He said, I'm coming to do it. I don't know why you're coming to come to America. We'll put a flag on the floor. All right, call up, call up, call up, call up for America. Be go ahead. Thank you very much for having me. My name is Habib Sharif, calling from Washington, D.C. And I just want to, I don't know if it's a question or a statement, but what it is, it seems like our current government, our current president in George Weah has messed things up so badly from what clear indication, what we hear from everyone. Is it is it fair for you know we the people now waiting for this election come 2023? Is it fair for us to just wait and say okay this is a slam dunk uh, we're going to have a new president and we're going to go in a new direction or is it going to be too naive uh, to have that kind of thinking at this time? That's my question. All right, let's John, we are Senator, Senator, Senator did we answer that for you that he is a mm -hmm. politician. We are finalists. All so right. just keep listening. He will answer that question for you. All right, but I hang up from you, right? Yeah, thank you. All right, thank you. Have a good day. All right. Thank you. Let me take this one. Good evening, your name. Where are you calling from? Good evening. My name is Julian Clear, and I call from Kansas County. Julian, go ahead. Uh, let me begin by saying thank you to Joe Sumo. I mean, I uh, actually admire the way he handled the show and the engagement with Intermiata. I thought he was going to get irritated about how a Democrat acts. But one thing that Trump has concerned, even though the failures of the CDC government were placed you know, on the show, and we all saw that. But everyone who supports uh, the, the JMB and NK ticket. It's actually waiting to see that the ticket be named and Captain Star. But as of now, we cannot see and hear anything, even since the United Party Convention. Um, our people are very impatient and people are anxious to launch the campaign, even here, start going from village to village, from hamlet to hamlet. But the fact that Everything is just cool and we can't get anything from JMB. Our people are getting disappointed. So we think on this show we want to make a public call to the old man that at least the ticket can be named sooner than later so that we can get to our people and be able to turn the password belt over to JMB. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. John Lobo. Are you okay? <laughs> John Lobo. <laughs> So when the buzzer is not there, they will not turn the ticket over to JMB? So, and call, call, the US, call up from the U.S., go ahead. That will be the last call for tonight. From yeah, the yeah. Call up, go ahead from the U.S. Call up from America on 7462, go ahead. Okay. But I don't know how to make that one call up, though. <laughs> but I don't know how to go ahead, you won't go ahead. Yeah, I'm okay, sir. <laughs> 
I didn't get you. What did you Thank say? Thank you. I'm saying when the show started sometime like a month ago, or you used to take one call for local and uh, the one call for international. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're telling the local more, more and now priority. it seems to be that there's no order. It just yeah, yeah. I mean, he's he's resting. We give him more right. priority, but anyway, you take three right. local, then you take one international, three local. Don't tell about both. He's so right, and I you, agree you with him. Yeah, you know that. We take, we take care of that, okay? Okay. okay. All right, sir. You know, well, I think also we, we, uh, we, we, I we need to hear more from I, the people from Liberia. Like, uh, I agree with the, with the caller, but mm -hmm. you know, sometimes, uh, yeah, on, I on, wanted on, to on. say this. Let me say this. Yeah, you said the last year, yeah, you said the get call. Yeah, hold on. No, you know, then you know. Yeah. Yeah. But the man on the line, the last man, you got, you got departed, man. Why are you already on the last uh -huh. Oh, okay. I thought you were gone. Let him go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah go, go ahead. Call on. Call up, call up from America. Go ahead. Yeah, my name is Manuel T. You are calling from the Christian Defense of I want to know, like, why no bill? Ever feel in the Liberian Senate? <laughs> I want to ask this question. Is that what? Yeah, the senator will answer you. They might say, you know, like, no, why no bill can feel in the Liberian Senate? No bill can feel? Like the, the American system. Where do we. They, 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 okay, the caller is saying in America, the guy's only called the filibuster, right? <laughs> so if you bring a particular bill, even if you get majority of Democrats want to talk when they don't have cross that field, that's what we did. Ten people from the other side should join. It will not pass. So you say, but it's not in Liberia. So anything you can just pass. Why? Yeah. And also the and vote the on, the well, the only interest you get? Okay. <laughs> they don't the best thing. Why are you the VP pay? That's all the work for you. So, I mean, um, so that was the final call. You know, I mean, it was a great show. Unfortunately, um, uh, we lost uh, Solo and uh, Costa, you know, to almost to watch it. But I think, you know, all in all, it was a great show. I, I, I like the fact that uh, at one point it became heated and the Miata and George when I, you know, it's, it, it, it shows how authentic we are here and, and how balanced we are that uh, we don't just bring people here only because they want to criticize government, but we bring people here that we can engage them and that as panelists ourselves, we can have our own opinion on issues. And I show that uh, it makes the debate stronger. It keeps the conversation going. So even though it was a full show. I know it's pretty much late um, on, on, on Indian Miatas and Delon's end, Senator Delon's mm -hmm. end. So, and I um, would like to would like to wrap up this, but we'll begin with Indian Miata. Uh, Indian Miata, you listen to the callers, um, you follow the conversation, you were very involved. Um, your what your closing, you know, your closing comments. Uh, thank you all very much. I've enjoyed the interaction, and you will never believe. I spoke to my daughter in the interim and she said I gave Mr. Sulu a hard time. Uh, I, I'm not going to apologize for giving Mr. Sulu a, a hard time. Uh, what has happened in our country is a result of the thousand Mr. Sulu's who massage the ego of this inept popular footballer. They massaged his ego. Mr. Solo, one of the qualities of leadership is that the leader must be a good judge of character. A leader must be a good judge of character. The leader who puts 
and surrounds himself with opportunists, sycophants, hypocrites, is not a leader. It's not a leader. And for people like George Solo, a quick history. We, the progressives of the 70s, we knew our society was in balance. In 1980, the Constitution of Liberia did not allow the Dillons, the Stevens, the George Lobo, the Jeremy McPier to vote if they did not have property. We, the progressives, advocated. The law was changed in the 1981 Constitution. My father was a member of the Constitutional C Committee. That is how we chose to change the status quo by giving our people the right to vote. So for, I will not allow individuals like the George Solos and others to come on public platform to underrate the contributions of the progressives in our country. I will not be a part of it. And my last comment, the sycophancy and, hip and hypocrisy in our society, we've got to deal with. Lema Boy, you want the opposition to come together, then make a commitment to one of those opposition parties. George Solo, you hear talking about the, the government has failed. Your government has failed. Yet, you cannot say who you are leaning towards. It is 2022. If any Liberian with intelligence does not know where they stand today, then you are a hypocrite. You are a sycophant. You are an opportunist. I'm for JMB, whether he wins or not. You say it. You say it. Instead of sitting on the fence. That's why we don't go anywhere. Thank you, Senator. Mm. I can go to bed now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, let me something. <laughs> go to, go to bed, I think brother. I was far more than the other. That was very far. Go to bed. Good night. People need to stay with Good night. Go to bed. <laughs> they, they know the history, then they want to come here. At 74, I've seen it all from Mr. Tottenham. Thank you. Huh? I thought you said good night already. <laughs> Yeah, let's have a joint. Let's have a joint. As usual, as usual, I want to thank my fellow panelists. I want to thank our two guests, uh, both Herman Costa and George Solo. Uh, I think today was the very first time I've ever had the opportunity to engage uh, George Solo. Uh, normally, I, I like to engage CDC with a current former official. Uh, I think it was a great conversation. And we hope other people from the uh, from the CDC uh, can be open for us to have these conversations. But there's one one key takeaway from what I gathered here today. I was taking notes extensively. All the explanation given by former Chairman Solo, he meant one thing very he made one thing very clear. You can't blame President George Weir. You can't blame then soccer star George Weir. You know who he blames for everything that happened? The Liberian people made a choice. Whether they believe in a fake revolution, whether they fell for a fake ideology, whether they fell for a 419 idea, they made that decision. So yes, indeed, the people bought what we sold to them, and they went for it. 
You Liberians have an obligation and a responsibility for the decisions you make. Here we are again with 12 months to go. You are now given the chance to decide your future. Make no mistake. I listen to Senator Dillon all the time saying, President George, we are, have indicated to us he has no desire to run for president based on his actions. If you really think, President, we have shown you anything, grant him another opportunity. But let me say this, my fellow Liberians. If there's anybody who have doubted your ability to make the right decision, I have not doubted you, people. I believe in you, and I will bet my life on you, people. Look, let me say this. I said it before, and I'll say again. We have an opportunity here to send the message to George Weah. And the likes of people who might be considering that they will find some opportunity to ride on again, that never in our history will repeat such mistake. How do we do it? It's by ensuring that this notion of second round and this and that don't even exist. Look, vote like you're voting against the high transportation costs. Vote like you're voting against your children's school fee. Vote like you are voting against the price of gasoline. If you do vote in that manner, there's no way we'll go to run up. The Constitution is very clear. You need 50% plus one to beat anybody to become president. 62% of the opposition voted against George Weah in the first round in 2017. That was when we didn't know what he had the ability to do. Now we know that he has the ability to do absolutely nothing. Not only that he has legalized corruption, you now have a decision. This time you can't say, let's try the boy. We've tried him. Five years of extreme hardship. Put the country in reverse. And it's in a studio recording songs. Folks, stop making excuses. Get ready. Let's make this thing a one shot. Let's retire President Weir and his entire gang of thieves for the good and save our country. This embarrassment and disgrace on the international stage. I thank you all for the opportunity. It was great being here with you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. Um, Pia. So today, what the show thought to achieve was to bring to your attention that the we are kleptocracy has failed so badly. And good enough, the failures are perfectly documented. Well, Stephen Johnson, Hardy on the screen. I will advise that we place it after the show on the class reloader page so our people can see the extent to which this group of people lied to the Liberian people, naming huge projects just out of imagination, projects that they could do nothing about. Sorry, Stephen Jay, hold on one minute. Something, some crazy stuff coming my screen. Project that they could do nothing about. But they tried to cajole you. They tried to fool you. And it worked. They've been there going to six years now. And all you see that we clearly explained today is massive failure. But guess what? They are up again. They're running up and down the villages and towns. My particular attention, like I said from the beginning of the show, has been drawn to Joy Howard Taylor, a woman who immediately upon the ascendancy of the government said it was their time to eat. A woman who went to Bond County and took and told the chiefs and elders and those that if they didn't join the CDC, they would have no job to do anymore. The woman who was so obsessed with the fact that she was now vice president and she didn't care for the people anymore. Yes, yeah, she said she was not going to be a, a race car parked in the garage. What she's been is a sleeping giant. She's been sleeping. And all she's been doing, crying and playing victim. Making it to appear that we are was punishing her. Tua was punishing her. Maggie was punishing her. Everybody was doing evil to her. And she played the victim game very well. Now that we are a few months back to election, she's up again in the towns and villages. She's saying, all of you who the screw, effort should be made to bring you back. Bring you not, not bring you back not for your good, but to give them job again for six years. And this is what I have to say to you. You, you are living the situation in Liberia currently. I have not lived on a George Weah since he came to power. So I don't know why it takes to live on a George Weah. It is you who live on a George Weah. If you think the life you're living there now, it's far better than what you were the years before he came. 
the choice is yours. It is you who will live it. But if you know that the situation has changed so badly, and some of you can hardly feed your children, you can hardly send your children to school, you're so insecure, insecurity all over the place, and the list goes on, combined with all the failures we just listed, then the choice is yours. That power is in your hands. You can use it wisely, or you can misuse it. The choice is yours. We play our part here on this platform. That's all we can do. Yes, some of us will come on the ground, maybe help with the election hearing process, but it is you who will go to the polls in your numbers and make the decision to free yourself. If you please with a regime where officials of the government can be sanctioned for stealing, then it's up to you. We'll keep talking to you. We wouldn't get tired. We'll keep leading you to that path where you make the right decision for the country. Thank you, Stephen. It's been a wonderful show. Thank you, George. You're a strong young man because I know from this show, you're going back to the drive and you're going to be there for another three hours. If you're a young guy that you can do that. 55 year old man of me, I will pull out if I try that. But keep it out. for the good of Mama Liberia. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. But before 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 we take the senator, let me let us announce that um I'd like to announce this. Uh, there's a dinner coming up uh the first of October, um um 2022, this uh, next month, uh in 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 Minnesota, the Friends of Delon and uh, Madas um, will be having a, a dinner program. It is a fundraiser intended to raise money um, for the rehab center. As many of us um, are aware that Senator Delon, uh, as part of his, uh, his campaign promise, uh, filed to fight uh, for uh, our at risk youth, especially those that have been victim of uh, drugs and substance abuse. And so he he uh, opened a, um, a rehabilitation center. Um, but to, for us to keep that center going, it, 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 it requires funding. They have uh, some items that they want to ship back to Liberia. So they will have a fundraiser. It will be in Minnesota um, the weekend of the, of the 1st of October. Senator Dillon will be at that program. So if you're in Minnesota, if you are around Minnesota, if you just across the US and you want to attend, uh, start looking forward to uh, going there to interact with Senator Dillon. For those of you who haven't seen him, uh, this will be a perfect opportunity for you guys to meet. Uh, tickets are on sale. Uh, we will share this flyer. Uh, on Wednesday, the group will come here briefly for the first segment of the show to talk more about the the program and what they intend to achieve at the end of the day. But we'd like to say uh, thanks to them. Uh, we'd like to uh, say all of those who are following us uh, to please make it your business. Uh, the ticket price is just 10 bucks. Um, you can cash up them. Um, the cash up information on the flyer will share that. Um, and then uh, you all can uh, be a part. So, uh, Senator. Thank you. So, uh, on the 30th of September of this month, at the close of this month, I will be in uh, Minnesota to meet and greet with the friends of Dillon and Madas, the organizers of this event that you are talking about. I'm so excited to meet with our people. Uh, they, they have gathered and put together a lot of uh, materials for the rehab center and uh, we'll do some fundraiser event to ship it to Liberia. This will be the second container that they will be shipping. The, 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 the shipping of the first 44 container which will have to equip uh, the rehab center and on the 1st of October in Minnesota we will be having the, the dinner the dinner on the 1st of October, on the 30th of September, I uh, will be meet and greet evening all in Minnesota at the all the um, the organization of Liberia in Minnesota. The OLM office, yes. the organization of Liberian Liberians in Minnesota. On the 30th of September, I will be there a day before. And then on the 1st of October, I will be will be at the event. You are welcome. Um, Costa talked about it this morning, and on Wednesday we have the Friends of Dillon and Madas, the leadership of the two teams, uh, to talk more about this. And then uh, from Minnesota, I'll be going to Ohio, to Dayton, uh, Ohio, to meet with the mayor. We're talking about library uh, in Montserrado County, and uh, library for Africa is an institution that has invited me in August this year. But because we're in special sessions, so I could not go. They want to do a lot in the 17 districts we have met. 
we met with the Deputy Minister of Education. We almost concluding that. We want to do one library in each of the districts using one public school per district. Uh, the, the discussions have gone very, very good way, and uh, we'll soon be seeing those things off. So I'll be in Ohio uh, for that purpose, right after we leave uh, Minnesota. And from there, I'm going to Pennsylvania Liberty Party, USA branch is having some event I should be attending. And then from there, I will be in Delaware um, to meet with Henry Costa and other friends. And then yeah, yeah, from I'll there- you, I'll meet you when you come, Delaware. Right, and then from there, I will make a two day start over in Washington, DC on official business. And then I will return to Liberia. I want to thank you, uh, Stephen, for hosting the show. Josh, thank you for always being available. Pia, thank you. Uh, th there are two questions I need to answer. One question is that uh, while there is no filibustering or filibustering on our flow, we don't have that in Liberia. We haven't uh, generated the passion to be able to work, even if we work through in the night. If session will be hard, and we can even hold one confirmation hearing for two, three days because it is so important. And we can hold budget hearing to hold one ministry or agency budget hearing for two, three days until we can break it down to do the appropriate, appropriate appropriation. We haven't reached there yet. Uh, we are impatient with lack the, 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 the passion, the discipline to do that. Uh, you can put a bill on the floor if a lawmaker who sign a law into a bill into law, the first bill I will assign into law for this country is that we should be making 5,000 or less. Or no lawmaker, whether you're planted or your few, can sign a bill into law. You can vote. You can vote. And to, to, to uphold or to hold up onto a bill that you deem not to be good for the people it takes number. That is why uh, we want to increase our number. And that is why we believe Henry Costa will help to increase our number. We will campaign for Yega Koluba and the likes of people who we believe we can hold on to the number increasing. Another question is, I have had governmental experience, uh, public service experience before becoming senator, and what is Costa's experience? The best way I can tell you is that representing people makes you an advocate. Representing people, the aspirations of people, you're going to stand for people. You're going to talk for people. You're going to represent their views and their interests and their aspirations. It makes you an advocate. And Costa is the damn good, very good, extremely good an advocate. It would, it would take advice, it would take courage. It would take uh, uh, numbers to help him. Like I'm looking for numbers to help the few of us that are standing up. I believe Costa won't let down. We all, we are humans. We are not perfect. But you look at the person's intention. You look at their capacity to stand, their ability to say what is right and what is wrong. And I would need Henry Costa. And uh, that's my choice. We are in 2023 already. You have not had a choice yet. Something is wrong. Anybody who has not had a choice yet, because everybody who is running for president will already know no new person coming to run for president. There's Cummings, there's Boaca, there's uh, Terran Gonglo, and of course we know there's George Weir. Uh, I don't know who else coming that's coming to shake this boat. So if you have not had a choice yet, you better hurry up and let's do it together. Um, I want to thank you for the show. The legislature is on break. We should be returning October 15th. I should be leaving from Liberia next week, mid by next week, to come to attend these events in America, after which I should return in time, in time, uh, when the legislature starts to return. I listened to a uh, read Lima Bowie's speech about calling opposition to come together. I agree with her. I agree with her. We should come together. But if we think opposition will come together, all opposition will come together on a one umbrella to make one ticket, I think that train left the station. 
I think left the station. It may sound disappointing, but that's a reality. The only thing opposition can do as in unity is to say we have a target. Let's focus on our target so that it makes it easier should we need one another in a runoff. But as it is, people have done so much to one another that even their own ego can allow them to even say no. I think I went too far with what I did. And 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 I think I want to extend olive branch. So let's come together. People, ego is playing, and that's not the way to do it for the country. Look, I know we have to go. When we won the 2020 election, even before then, a lot of people wanted us in the race for president. We said no. There's a CPP. The Liberian people have decided they want Boyka Commons ticket. Where people wanted me or thinking that I had eye on the vice president for vice president, I said no. Because too many of us expressing our desire to contest for the one seat will cause division. Nobody can say no. Labor and the party say we're not feeding any candidate for the top ticket. Because we wanted a united opposition. What the Liberian people desired, what they wanted, what they craved for. Other people they didn't see it, they said they were exercising their right and in exercising their right. We are where we are. So the only thing we can do to help the manifest is to say, hey, there's a bigger picture that we all need to look at. We need to stop the bleeding. The country is bleeding on our jobs we are. If we allow opposition this unity to cause George Weir to win, the bleeding won't stop, the wound will get deeper. So it's time for us to realize that it is not about us, it's about the people. Let's 2023 be the year that will stop the bleeding on our George Weir. And then we can start to heal our country going into after 2023 to look for um, prepared, more vibrant, ready young people to take over after 20, by 2029. And that's the way I want to close the line. I want to thank you again. And we're here. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Senator. Steven, is, the, 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 the new song, Steven, the new song on the, on the market is called Ami Montel, you get it? Uh, no. <laughs> so, so we have a, we have a fan club uh, for the uh, class reloaded. Um, we we'll post, we'll posted this uh, poster on the page. Um, you can, if you want to be a part of the uh, fan club of the uh, class reloaded, you can call the numbers. Um, the number on the screen there is 0881500400. So that's 0881500400. Or you can send us an email at uh, ibnabbas24 at yahoo.com. So once again, if you want to be a, a part of the class, we'll, and we we'll also have coming up um, opportunities for businesses who will want to advertise here on the show. You can help promote your businesses. Um, we'll have that uh, flyer coming up because uh, we need uh, funding to run some of these radio stations that we um, that we have uh, hired to carry our show. And if you want to expand. We also need to look at revenue stream in order for us to expand our operations to cover the entire country. But let me give my take. I think, you know, we come here every day, not necessarily not because we are less busy, but that because we hate the government. We, we take up time from our basic schedule to come here to provide knowledge, to provide education for our people, to help them in the decision making. For many, for many months, for many uh, days, many of our people went to bear angry. They were listening to news that did not represent a balance in terms of the actual narrative in the country. And so when we started this show, the goal has been to provide education, to provide a balance, to provide credible news, to provide the kind of information our people need to make a decision. And this is why we come here every day, three hours, four hours of our time, take up all our basic schedule to be here for our senator and other people in Liberia, it's almost midnight that we are here, only because we want a change for our country. We don't hate George Weah. We don't hate the CDC. We just love Liberia more. And because we do, this is why it's important we come here every day to educate our people. And we are sorry. We are sorry. I know uh, it is not all good yet, but imagine if we did not have 
the class will load it. Imagine how these people load up their pension retirement bill on me. Exactly. Imagine how they, how they almost succeeded in diminishing our voice and love that the people have. The voice, the love to listen to, they believe in. And imagine how people just take to the radio, to the airwaves, deliberately with political intent to diminish your voice. Exactly. And get you wrong information and make you believe that somebody who you believe in has done the worst. Exactly. And so never follow him anywhere he goes. And then all they're doing this thing for is for 2023. Yeah. Dylan is so hugely popularly loved and believed and followed. So we got to do everything to diminish this Dylan. The same thing they do to Joseph Buaka, the same thing they do to Nyomdi Kanga Lawrence, the same thing that. They do this thing deliberately, and the country was going to bed home and be angry, disappointed, because they thought what they were being said was true, and because that's the only thing they were hearing. And that is why the class came to give you a balanced, well, uh, at I most, they don't, they don't, they don't. more educated. Senator, they don't, please, and I'll continue yeah. about what are your schedule again? I got some on the land, one of your supporters who. Asking me when you come in. When you come in? I should be in Minnesota by the I should be in Minnesota by the 29th, it's September. The color is concerned about Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Philadelphia will be the week after the, the week after the first of October. I'm, I'm in I'm in Minnesota after the fourth of October. I'm going to Ohio from there, then from there to Pennsylvania and Delaware. I see, okay, Before I, I go to Washington, we can after the fourth of October. Yeah. So, 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 uh, and Senator, you know, I, I, I got a so from, from, a, from a caller, who, from a, from a, from a, from a supporter who wanted us to, to find a day. Uh, maybe we can, you know, let. And I think we can work on it to see. They wanted us to do something called fact check. You know, uh, maybe we can see Tuesdays and Thursday where we can just do fact fact check, right? So we look at issue the government has spoken about, and we just provide the facts, and, and 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 it can be maybe two of us or somebody else want to join, you know, just to just talk about something. Because as we go as we go towards twenty twenty three, it's important for us to be on this platform every day. It is important not to give that window because that little Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, even though you come on Sunday, but that Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturdays, is we have to fill in that gap. So that there is constant flow of information from Monday to Sunday, so that our people can be adequately informed, so that we can arm them to their teeth, so that going to war 2023, they can understand the argument, they can go in the community, they can make the case, they can defend themselves, they can be ambassadors of the message we appreciate. So, so, I, think last, we have so look at. I think we have about eight panelists. Let's talk behind the scene and split ourselves per day. How many pers how many person per day so that we can we can meet the desire of our people to be yeah. on every day? Yeah, and and, 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 and and let us also send out a message to uh to folks out there too who, who are interested in, in joining the team. Right. You can send me a you can send me a message in back if you're interested in joining the team. Um, um you can come on, we can plan some schedule on Tuesday and Thursday where we come on, you know, and we involve you in the process. So there's a right. invitation out there to to our Fans, our supporters, our well wishers to come up. Still, 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 Bezon, Grand Basso County, um, Voice of Lofa FM uh, 99.3, there in Vongeman, uh, Radio Joy Africa 97.5, uh, Radio Gompa, um, Radio Joy is in my Gibi, excuse me, um, uh, Voice of Gompa 106.5, there in Lima and Buto Radio 102.6, all the way there in, 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 in Sino County. For our quotation for the night is by uh, Barack Obama, uh, the former US president. He says that uh, changes, change will not come if we wait for some other person or some other time, 
We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the change that we seek. So let me read it again. Change will not come if we wait for some other person or some other time. We are the ones that have been that we have been waiting for. We are the change that we seek. So this is by uh, U.S. former U.S. President uh, Barack Obama. On that note, we'd like to thank all of you for joining us. Thank to our um, a special thank you to our um, before yes, you go earlier. Yeah, let me before just say thank to to. Uh, George Solo, Henry Costa, and Ente Miata, and uh, George, uh, uh, George Lobo, and including Amos Twer, the Secretary General of the United Party, was on earlier, and uh, Cornelia uh, Kura Topa, who was also on earlier for joining us. Yes, yeah, Senator, finally. What is she though? Oh, yeah, you're coming. We'll drink a beer when you come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Stevie. Yeah. Please, please, please take note of that call of concern. We can't be announcing radio stations that are not carrying the program. Yeah, now, so yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll yeah. make some follow-up. We'll yeah. we, we, you know, we set up most of these stations, so I don't know. And you know, it's difficult for us here to be able to track them. We we'll have to get people in the back to make those calls to see what are they coming on, what are, you know, what is happening there. Yeah. But we do, we take due note of our concern, and I right. think it's important. Okay. Yes, yeah, you come in from Minnesota or Wabla meeting here. No, you meet here in Philly. I'm not in Minnesota. I don't got nothing to do in Minnesota. I'm in Pennsylvania. Oh, yeah, okay, I'll, but I'm coming I'll, anyway. I'm coming. I'll make my time to to to. John Lobo, there. you want me to come to Arizona? I think Josh will come on the East Coast. I think Josh getting ready for his show. He comes on in twelve minutes, so we got. Right, go. right. Yeah. So, so uh, guys, thanks for uh, us, man. It was a it was a good show, and I, you know. Yeah, Steve. Keep now. keep the shinta on. Keep the shinta. Yeah. Down. Oh yeah. Obviously, once he come, we 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 not glasses <laughs> and uh, we we we'll talk more. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Thank guys. You. Yeah. Thank you. Liberians, register to vote for the 2023 general and presidential elections. Registration starts December 15, 2022 and ends March 17, 2023. Your vote is your voice. Be heard. Vote as if your life depends on it because it does. You have the power. Use it. Register to vote. Play your part. A message. From the class we loaded with sponsorship in liberia november 1944 a public spirited person was born joseph numa wakai from wasanga foyer district lofa county he is a role model he's actually my inspiration he's also a perfect example of humility he's a very humble person through that papay, the help he start giving all from this swap here. I know that when he get there, he will help me. He will help the nation. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Yeah.
Lidi, 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 it's all in the game, it's all in the game. Here, there, and everywhere. The people keep on crying.